I'm Bob Jenkins along with Benny Parsons here at Daytona USA as we continue to host the NASCAR Marathon here on ESPN2, part of NASCAR's 50th anniversary celebration. Boy, it almost brings tears to your eyes to see Allen's win there at Phoenix. At the time, it didn't seem significant, but boy, it sure turned out to be. Well, the win didn't seem that significant, but that Polish victory lap. I mean, how big was that? The Kawiki turned around backwards. No one, folks, had ever seen that before. Never in the history of stock car racing had someone gone backwards and waved to the crowd like Kawiki did. Several people have, have really and truly tried to imitate that since 1988, but Kawiki, the first to do it, and everyone said, what's he doing? And he said, that was my Polish victory lap. I've been thinking about doing this for a long, long time. Allen was indeed a uh, special person. He was the 14th different winner in 1988. And also the fourth different first-time winner. He won his first race. Also, Lake Speed won the spring race at Darlington. Phil Parsons and Ken Schrader also won their very first NASCAR Winston Cup race in 1988. Although Rusty Wallace dominated the final race of the year at Atlanta, Bill Elliott won the championship in 1988. Now we move ahead to October of 1989 and North Wilkesboro, North Carolina Speedway. And when I think of that track, I think of you. Because, folks, that was my home, North Wilkesboro. And my first race that I ever witnessed in my life was North Wilkesboro Speedway. I think it was 1948 or 1949. My dad drug me down there to a 5 8 mile dirt track in 1989. It had been paved. And it was a great points battle once again between Bill Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. The Tyson Holly Farms 400 from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina Speedway from October 15th of 1989 as the NASCAR Marathon continues. You're looking at a live shot of Rusty Wallace, the new leader in NASCAR Winston Cup points. Dale Earnhardt, who has led since the middle of June, now finds himself in a totally different role and the two will renew their battle for the coveted crown in the Holly Farms 400, live today from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, here on ESPN. Two weeks ago, this event was postponed because of heavy rain in the Brushy Mountains. At that time, Earnhardt was points leader by 75 over Wallace, and Mark Barton was 255 behind. Then there was Charlotte last week. Only 13 laps into the All-Pro Auto Parts 500, Dale is out of the race. He would finish last and failed to complete a race for only the second time in the 1989 Winston Cup season. Anybody can have trouble. We had it today, and, you know, if, if he wins the championship, which I ain't giving up, then the racing ain't over. But, you know, he, he didn't beat us today. We beat ourselves. It's not like I fell into something. You know, if everybody remembers, at the beginning of the year, I had three 40-place finishes. I, I blew up, was the last guy out at Atlanta and in Martinsville, and then I blew up here at uh, Charlotte. So I've got three, like, dead last finishes, and Dale don't have that. Uh, I don't wish anybody any bad luck, but I think he was kind of due one. I just didn't know if he was due that severe a one. Rusty needed Dale's bad luck because he, too, had problems at Charlotte. A loose lug nut caused severe vibration in the car. That caused further handling problems that had to be corrected during pit stops. Rusty did finish eight, ten positions more than required to take over the points lead. So as we get set for race number 26 at North Brooksboro, Rusty Wallace is leading by 35. And Mark Martin, who was third at Charlotte, is only 157 behind. It's a beautiful day today in North Wilkesboro, certainly a lot different than two weeks ago. We have bright sunshine today and no chance of rain. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to North Wilkesboro and the Holly Farms 400. We're closing out the 1989 season now, just three more races to go after today, and the points battle is a tremendous one. Rusty Wallace now has a lead. He'll start second in today's race. Remember, they'll start according to points before Charlotte. Last week at Charlotte, both Wallace and Earnhardt had their problems, but they were problems of a different kind. And for more on that, let's go to our pit reporters. First, Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, thank you very much, Bob Jenkins. You know, late in the year, you worry about possible breakdowns from mental fatigue. Well, last week, it wasn't mental fatigue for Dale Earnhardt. In fact, it was mental fatigue. Take a look at this camshaft. This is what broke on the Dale Earnhardt car on lap 13 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Just inside the back gearing at the first lobe, this shaft broke. Now, Carl and Richard Childers said, these babies break it. It's about as rare as lips on a woodpecker. It just doesn't happen. The first time he's broken one in six years. But this $450 camshaft may have cost Dale Earnhardt a chance at winning $1 million in the Winston Cup Championship. 
And my colleague, the editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine, Dick Bergen, standing by the fellow who now leads the Winston Cup points, but he didn't get away completely unscathed last week either, did he, Dick? No, he didn't, Jerry, and the pressure is on. The human pressure, and every one of these team members running for the championship feels it. Nobody wants to be the guy to leave a loose lug nut behind. That pressure has also led to an intense examination of the cars. Just two hours ago, crew member Barry Dotson discovered a leaking master cylinder in this automobile. Had he not made that discovery, Rusty Wallace's chances for the championship would have been much diminished. Everybody feels the heat. <laughs> the guns are drawn. Bob Jenkins, this is a war. And the war is just about to begin here at North Wilkesboro. The, car, the cars are on pit road. The drivers are in them. Let's go now to the Holly Farm Senior Vice President, Frank Rhodes, for the command. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the Senior Vice President for Holly Farms, Mr. Frank Rhodes. Frank, everybody on your feet! Two cars roar to life. It's a sold out house here at North Wilkesboro as we get set for race number 26 in the Winston Cup season. Let's go now to two former Winston Cup champions who will be with me in the booth today Benny Parsons and Ned Jarrett. Well, Bob Rusty Wallace is in control with that 35 point lead, and really all he has to do is duplicate his speed of a year ago when he won three of the last four races and finished fifth in the other one. Or if he gained, if he averages two second place in every race from here on out. He can clinch the championship. On the other hand, Dale Earnhardt has to gain two positions per race on Rusty Wallace if he's going to come back and win his fourth title. But Benny Parsons, that's not going to be easy for either one of them. And there's another guy that's in the thick of this battle now. Charlotte, let Mark Martin get back in the race. As Bob Jenkins said, Mark Martin is only 157 points behind those two. And he's right behind them. On this first lap, folks, it's going to be a classic first lap. Earnhardt and Wallace trying desperately to lead that first lap and get five bonus points for leading. Mark Martin sitting back there behind those two. They may get too greedy and let Mark Martin catch up either even further. It's going to be awfully interesting. Bob Jenkins, what about the rest of the field? All right, Benny. Well, we have, as I said, 32 cars and drivers that are set to go here for 400 laps at North Wilkesboro, and here is the starting lineup. On the pole from Kannapolis, North Carolina, in the GM Goodwin Chevrolet, car number three is Dale Earnhardt. Alongside Rusty Wallace from St. Louis, Missouri, he drives the number 27 Kodiak Pontiac. Starting third inside of row number two, it's Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas, the Stroll Light Ford, car number six. And outside of row number two from Franklin, Tennessee, driving the number 17 Tide Chevrolet is Darrell Waltrip. Starting in row number three, Ricky Rudd in the Quaker State Buick number 26 and Bill Elliott in the Coors Ford car number nine. In row number four, it's the number 25 car driven by Ken Schrader and Davey Allison in number 28. The fifth row, Terry Labonte in number 11 and Harry Gant in 33. The sixth row, Jeff Bodine in number five and Sterling Marlin in 44. And as we look at the rest of the starting lineup, the cars move down the front stretch and we'll be getting the green flag in one more lap and this first lap ought to be a dandy, guys. It certainly should be, Bob. And they're using radial tires here today. This is the third time this year that they've used radial tires. I tell you what, I can't wait. This first lap, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to watch because who is going to lead the first lap and get those five bonus points? I can't stress how important it is. Dale Earnhardt, there is the bumper cam on Harry Gant's car. As we look back on Sterling Marlin, we also have that side cam on Michael Waltrip's car, the one that gave us such tremendous shots at Martinsville a few weeks ago. And we're also inside Ricky Rudd's car, the Quaker State Buick. Here comes the field, and the green flag is out!
of this race. Mark Martin is running second. Ricky Rudd is third. Back in fourth position, battling to stay in fourth position, is Rusty Wallace along with Darren Walter. They're second and third, Martin and Rudd. What happened? Dale Earnhardt having the pole position. He is the fellow that starts the race. He laid back behind Rusty Wallace and got a great start. And Rusty Wallace just caught him unprepared because he was behind in front of Earnhardt and not able to tell when he was going to get on the front. Earnhardt was going to be sure that he got those five bonus points for leading that race. Right now, he's only 30 points behind. Exactly. And he has pulled out to a rather comfortable lead over Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd. And there is Rusty Wallace, who has fallen back to fifth position. Let's go down to pit road for a report on the Rusty Wallace car. Just spoke with Barry Dotson, the crew chief, a minute ago. He said Rusty just couldn't get the car in line. He was on the outside, hung out to dry, and you got to be very careful early on with these radial tires. It's awfully slippery out there. Those tires get heated up a little bit. Rusty had to take his time and wait to get a spot to move in behind Darrell Walter, and it cost him four spots. He currently is in fifth spot. But we've got a long way to go. 400 laps on this point. Mile racetrack. Now we see action behind Rusty Wallace. That's Ken Schrader in 25, Bill Elliott in number nine, and Jeff Bodine in the yellow and white five. Bill Elliott almost got by Ken Schrader on the outside, and then early on, this early in the race, that would have been impressive had he been able to make that move. Yes, it would, because they they really are going to tiptoe for a while on the radial tires. Once they get heated up and they get a little rubber in the racetrack, of course, they practiced for three hours here yesterday afternoon. But still, the track is knocked the way it'll be a little later on, and then they'll get a little more confidence in those times. And there were no serious problems during that three-hour practice period yesterday. Phil Parsons did spin and bump the wall, but no major damage to that race car. Now, we might point out that there is no Unical money available today because qualifying was washed out and the lineup is according to points before Charlotte. No Unical money. It'll be worth $190,000 when you join us in Rockingham a week from today. And, Bob, if it gets through Rockingham and Phoenix, the people of Atlanta has said if the Unical Challenge gets to Atlanta, it'd be worth $205,000. They're going to match it. Would make the pole winner eligible to win. Dale Jarrett spins off of corner number four here on the main straightaway. Keeps it going, however, and will not see a yellow flag. Dale Jarrett off of corner number four doing a complete spin around, but keeps going. There was some pretty serious damage to Dale's left rear quarter. It looks like someone got into him. I don't know exactly who it would be, but as the car was spinning around, ooh, almost spun again. Yeah, he was in a pretty tight battle back there with uh, Derek Cope, Dave Marcus, Jimmy Spencer. A lot of them were running close together back there, jockeying for position. So all is well, well with Dale Jarrett. He continues in the race. Meanwhile, we pick up on this battle for position. Schrader, Elliott, Jeff Bodine, and now the number 11 car. Terry Labonte joins in. Let's go to Jerry Punch. You can uh, have, have more. We have a spin over in turn number three as Rick Wilson loses control and slides into the infield grass. Just entering turn number three. And no yellow flag is out yet. Harold Kinder and the NASCAR officials are watching the situation very closely. And now we will have a yellow. Rick Wilson from Bartow, Florida, spins over in turn number three on lap number 14. Bringing out our first caution of the day. And Rick started this race in 14th position. And that'll be a break for Dale Jarrett because Dale Earnhardt was just about to put him a lap down. There is the leader of the race, Dale Earnhardt, under caution for the first time this afternoon in North Wilkesboro. We're glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon for Winston Cup Racing, and we'll be back with more of our live coverage after this. Still under caution. And Harry Gann is headed toward pit road, and Kyle Petty is already in. His wheel came off. Yeah, he started to leave the pits. They changed the right side tires on the peak. Antifreeze Pontiac, and I guess they had loosened the left side tires, and it came loose, so Kyle has gone a lap down in the pit. We have several cars that are on pit road. We are cautioned because of this Rick Wilson over in turn number three. We don't know what caused the spin to start with. Evidently, he made some contact with Harry again, because Harry's in the pits. He's got some uh, serious damage to the left front. How far? How bad is it, Dick Bergman? 
Well, Benny, I think they can pound it out. The left front fender was in the tire, and as he takes off out of pit road right now, it looks pretty good, but that was the cause of a lot of smoke that we saw down here. Uh, get in before most everybody else stayed on the racetrack. He sure had to change that left front. So Gant joining the field once again. As Rick Wilson is also back out onto the racetrack after that spin. Bill Parsons is back out there. We're going to take another break before we go green once again in the Holly Farms 400 here at North Wilkesburg. back out at North Booksboro and the race continues. There are your top four. Dale Earnhardt at number three. Mark Martin at number six. Ricky Rudd at number 26. And Daryl Waldrop at 17 as 22 laps have been completed. Just behind the 17 car is Rusty Wallace who is in fifth at the moment. We've just gone green from our first caution of the afternoon because of a spin over in turn number three involving Rick Wilson on the restart. Jimmy Spencer jumped in and came in for a stop and go penalty. And here is Derry Cope who gets way out of shape, high on the racetrack in turn number four, maintains control but loses several positions. Derry Cope, car number 10. He and Dale Jerry got together a little bit going into turn three, but watch it again. Jerry gives the hardest Pontiac down on the inside, and it looks like he just touches Cope's car enough to get it out of control, and he slides high on the racetrack, but he does maintain control. the leader it's Dale Earnhardt who now is in second in the Winston Cup points leading the race he has led since the drop of the green flag getting a good jump on Rusty Wallace and the others but Rusty Wallace folks I, man I am really he is not running the way that Rusty Wallace normally runs he's a half straight away behind Earnhardt my question is is he taking it easy or does he have a problem I really don't know the answer to those questions because look Mark Martin pushing Earnhardt down the front straight away. Mark Martin said all weekend that he really didn't feel comfortable in the car, that the radial tires just weren't to his liking yet, but he's showing no evidence of that right now as he is right on the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt in a close battle with him and would like very much to get into the lead. Mark Martin, we had uh, not mentioned very much four or five races ago as being a contender for the Winston Cup, but indeed he is very much in the thick of things. Trying to make a move on Dale Earnhardt to the outside, cannot make the move, and continues to run in second position, but he is running well. Earnhardt's car starting to slip a little bit off. Look, Mark Martin tries on the inside. As they go into turn number one, Martin tries to get the inside position, can't pull alongside of Dale Earnhardt, however, and they continue to run in that order of Earnhardt and Martin. Well, Earnhardt would certainly like to stay out there and lead more laps than anyone else today because that's another five-point bonus. But there's a lot of laps left in this race. Mark the Martin Mark leads early here, the better event. Once again, he's got position on Earnhardt. Maybe he just can't get back on the gas like he needs to in the middle of one and two. Coming off the corner, going inside. He set Earnhardt up for the pass, and let's see if he can complete it going into turn number one. Side by side, they run through there. Earnhardt to the high side of the track. Mark Martin to the inside line, and Mark goes into the lead. He'll have to cross the line, however, and be scored as the leader before he officially picks up the five bonus points. And now a battle for third position going on as Mark Martin will lead the lap. Darrell Waldrop now is third, Ricky Rudd fourth, and back in fifth, there is Rusty Wallace. Let's go down to Jerry Punch, and he can perhaps answer the question that Benny asked. Is he just laying back, or is there something wrong, Jerry? Well, Benny, that you asked that question. Why don't we ask Barry Dotson, the crew chief? And Barry? He's trying to get Rusty to sound they come by. The question is, is Rusty laying back, or taking it easy, or does he have a problem? Well, we're trying to take it easy. The car's a little bit too tight. That won't last very long in Wilkesboro. Right now, we're in pretty good shape. we got a good seat just watching the leader. They have the car bolted to the racetrack very tight early on, but it gets awfully slippery here, and you compound that with the radial tires. The rusting is biting his time, gentlemen. Now, we've explained it before on short tracks, but why will the car improve if it is tight as we go along? One reason, the track gets slicker, and as the tires heat up, the back end will get a little bit looser going into the turns and coming off the turns. So getting a good bite, good traction coming off the turns is so important on the short track 
because you run a very low gear, put a lot of power to the tires, and that's where you can make up a lot of time. And having a good, tight race car allows you to do that. Wallace continues to run in fifth position. As now, Daryl Waltrip in car number 17 begins to battle Dale Earnhardt for the second position. Darrell Walker was very strong in practice here yesterday afternoon in the three-hour practice session. His car was working well. He likes to run on the low side of a racetrack, and here he is on the low side trying to take away that second position right now. Mark Martin moved inside off corner number four a few laps ago to pass Dale Earnhardt, and now Darrell Waltrip is trying to do the same thing. Earnhardt races him through the first and second turns, but as they go down the back stretch, Waltrip moves ahead by just about a half a car length, but Dale Earnhardt is not willing to relinquish that second position. Well, that's pretty impressive, Ned. Earnhardt on the outside is able to stay on the beside the 17 car, so maybe Dale Earnhardt has found something out there on the outside of this racetrack. Well, if he can run out there now while they're racing for position, when they get in the traffic, that could work to his advantage. <laughs> that time, Darrell Walter went in the corner a little bit stronger than normal, carried Earnhardt up the hill a little bit and took the spot away. A few laps ago, this little incident between Jeff Bodine and the yellow and white number five on the outside of the 94 blue car of Sterling Marlin. Well, it looks like they touched just a little bit as they started off of turn four. Bodine goes very high, as we saw Derek Cope a little bit earlier. Marlin stays in the groove, takes the position. In fact, Bodine lost about three positions. So there is Jeff Bodine, as now as he is behind Davey Allison at number 28, and just ahead of the couple of drivers who are battling for the Rookie of the Year honors, Larry Pearson and Dick Trickle. back for 12th position. Harry Pearson looking inside of Bodine going into turn number one. Okay, he's another oh. driver very good yesterday, but that little oh. bit of a tap almost caused him to go around, but he did a good job of bringing that car back. Because most of the time they say, when you get a car sideways on those radials, it's gone. But Larry Pearson proved that you could bring it back. We have dispelled that theory already because Larry Pearson with a nice job of saving it completely sideways in turn number one. Wilson is there at number four. The number two car is Ernie Irvin. Here's a replay. Pearson trying to get down on the inside of Jeff Bodine and touches the left rear quarter pile up. Bodine gets Bodine a little bit loose, but really gets Larry Pearson loose. He turns sideways and gets it straightened out again. It is still Mark Martin who is leading the Holly Farms 400. He took over the lead from Dale Earnhardt a few laps ago and has stretched out the advantage now by about a half a straightaway on Darrell Waltrip, who is running in second position. Earnhardt is third, fourth is Ricky Rudd, and then fifth, about uh, almost a full straightaway behind. In fifth position is Rusty Wallace. Then comes Ken Schrader, Bill Elliott, Terry Labonte, Morgan Shepard, Alan Kowicki, Tommy Ellis substituting for Neil Bonnet and Sterling Marlin. And what all the fellows was telling me about the radials of uh, uh, guys was that if they slide one time, like we saw Derek Cope and Jeff Bodine slide, boy, they are really a handful then. The radials is, is it, you have to drive a race car a lot differently on a radial than you do on a bias fly tire. Mark Martin laps the 27th place car of Derek Cope, number 10, so 26 cars are on the lead lap now. Guess they're going to run the radials at Rockingham next weekend. They sure are. I was down this week, Thursday and Friday, watching some of the guys test tires and practice, and sure enough, the radials, they were talking about using them in Atlanta the last race of the year, but some, they went down last week. Harry Gant tested them, also Ken Schrader, and both those guys spun out on the radials. Harry Gant actually hit the wall and damaged his car fairly severely, so they decided to pull the radials the last race in Atlanta. There's Dale Earnhardt, third position at the moment, and he has three career wins here at North Wilkesboro. The 87, 86, and 89 first Union 400s. He has never won this particular race. All of his wins here at North Wilkesboro have come in the uh, spring event. Let's go down to Jerry Punch, who has a comment. A minute ago, you heard Barry Dotson tell us that Rusty Wallace had a car that was very, very tight, and therefore they knew the track would come to him and they would get a little bit looser. We just talked to Richard Childers here at the Dale Earnhardt pit, and he tell us they're probably just the opposite. They are extremely loose coming off the corner. Should everybody be able to see Earnhardt's car spinning the tires coming off the corner? And everyone.
everyone's taking advantage. Everyone, to me, Mark Martin and Darrell Walter both going by Earnhardt and Nelson back in third spot. So it would appear here in the first 45 laps of this race that the two cars that are set up best are Mark Martin and Darrell Waltrip, who is in second position, as both Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace have experienced a little bit of handling problems in the early going. Fourth position belongs to Ricky Rudd. As there is Mark Martin, the leader of the race, lapping Richard Petty in car number 43. He runs 25th at the moment, so 24 on the lead lap. Let's go to Dick Bergman, who has a comment on Mark Martin. Well, Bob Jenkins, when you talk about setting up with radials, nobody has more practice at it than the leader, Mark Martin's team. They have tested radials at Dover, here, Daytona, Charlotte, and tomorrow they'll be back at Daytona for three more days of radial testing. This business of running on radials is a matter of a learning curve, and the team with the most practice, the most experience, is showing it. They're right out front right now. Mark Martin in the lead. Darrell Waltrip is second, but here is third, fourth, and fifth, and you can see that Rusty Wallace is now beginning to move in on the fourth place car, Ricky Rudd. So that's how they run as we have completed 52 laps out of 400 in the Winston Cup race at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Back with more of our live coverage after this. Brushy Mountains, North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, the Holly Farms 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race. Our leader is Mark Martin in car number six, but the battle on the track is a few car lengths behind him. That's Ricky Rudd at number 26, battling with Dale Earnhardt at number three, and watching all of this from fifth position is Rusty Wallace in car number 27. Looks like the Rusty's chassis is getting a little bit better, a little bit better like Barry Dawson said it would. He pulled up on the back bumper of Bernard. Yeah, I think a tight chassis now. We've run about 55 laps, and that's when it should start working. And Rusty Wallace gaining on him, and the car looks very smooth for him. Here is Ricky Rudd right alongside Dale Earnhardt, as we have now the view of Ricky Rudd in the Quaker State Buick. Trying to take over third position. Darrell Waltrip is in second. And now something happened to Rudd's car just all of a sudden. He slows dramatically. Here coming off four. I wonder if he might got a bump from Rusty Wallace behind him because he was trying to get by Earnhardt and Rusty was behind him. I, I didn't see it. I was watching the in-car camera on the monitor. but Well, let's replay it and see if we can determine what happened as Rusty does battle now with Earnhardt. Here it is. No, he just got it loose. Just got it loose. Nobody touched him. Yep. So just a slight bobble on the part of Ricky Rudd. He didn't lose any positions, however, has fallen back quite a bit on the racetrack. Now we watch Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt, who are battling for the Winston Cup, battle for third position. Wallace working to the inside of Dale down the front stretch. Earnhardt already has five bonus points for leading the race. Wallace would have to get those also if he's going to win the Winston Cup in 1989. Great shot from Ricky Rudd's car watching these two guys. And they can't really go after it the way that they want to now because they might crash. You've got to be careful, guys. Didn't take Rudd long to catch back up with them running side by side. And they are running side by side and wheel to wheel. job of holding off Rusty for third and Ricky a little bit loose again there in corner number four. There are just 18 cars on the lead lap. While this tremendous battle goes on for third, Mark Martin is just fighting his way through traffic. There he is, passing Davey Allison, putting him a lap down. Now there will only be 17 cars, or 16 cars on the lead lap. But this is certainly the best battle on the racetrack. Again, we tell you that Darrell Waltrip is second, running by himself. This is third, fourth, and fifth right here. Wallace Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd. Wallace again alongside of Earnhardt as they go down the backstretch. 
<laughs> the Ricky Rudd just simply don't know which car to follow. He said, hey, guys, somebody pass somebody. <laughs> well, maybe he's going to try to pass both. No, that's not the thing. Here's Dave Marcus, the number 71. He's a lap car running 28th at the moment. Well, now Ricky Rudd has decided to follow Earnhardt because Earnhardt has taken the advantage, and he might, Rudd might get around Rusty Wallace. So now the battle is for fourth position as Marcus is staying right in there with those on the lead lap. And here comes Terry Labonte at number 11, not too far behind. And he is on the lead lap in sixth. <laughs> oh, Rusty, when it rains, it pours. One guy got by him, and now he's really... Marcus, if he gets by, and Labonte were to get by, he'd drop back instead of going forward. And Jeff Bodine is about to go down a lap in 16th position. There is Mark Martin, the leader of the race, going to the inside and passing Jeff, going into turn number five. So Mark Martin is setting a terrific pace, now only 15 on the lead lap. It's unbelievable Mark Martin would be running this well because in practice here two weeks ago, he spun out three times just simply trying to practice. And yet today in the race, he's going on like... He's got the greatest throw on the face of the earth. You know, if anyone thinks that impressed me yesterday, I watched almost the entire three-hour practice period, and Mark Martin got out there, and he got the car set up pretty good as we watched Ricky Rudd try to get by Dale Earnhardt, but he would run 25, 30, 35 lap runs. Most of them would come out and run eight, six, eight, ten laps like they normally do. He ran long stretches of laps out there, and I think that worked to his advantage. Well, right, we up. have a crash up in turn number three, between three and four, as Larry Pearson, Michael Waltrip, and Sterling Marlin are against the wall in turn number three. Now Larry Pearson pulls away. There's the shot from the side cam on Michael Waltrip's car as he, too, pulls away. Gets the car going again. Sterling Marlin is also leaving the scene of the incident. And on lap number 69, it's our second caution period of the day. I'll tell you what, our camera's still working because Michael Waltrip's car right under the camera that you're looking from is caved in with some serious damage with someone, but luckily our camera's still working. And this caution period is going to bring everybody in for a pit stop. Let's go to Dick Bergeron, who's in Mark Martin's pit. Well, most everybody is going to take four tires. By the way, this will be a near $20,000 tire change. That's what it costs for a field of 30 cars to change four tires. The key here for Mark, get out first. So he's got nobody he's going to have to pass. He's in great shape. The left tires are, right side tires are on already. Rustin Wallace is just in now. Jerry Punch is now with Darrell Waltra. Eddie Dickerson, Jeff Hammond, Teddy Jones, and the crew have completed the right side. They will scamper around the left side. As Jack beneath the tide, Chevrolet. Left front and left rear tire going on. Air Rich is putting those lug nuts back on. Cleaning the front rail. Walter Star down away. Dale Earnhardt now getting left side tire. Down on the jack. He will follow. Jerry Gates down the road. Here's Ricky Run. Dale Jarrett. Lusty White. All the cars coming back to the third one. And he's changed four tires. And there's a hat on the track. And that didn't come off of one of the tracks. <laughs> turn number three so everybody has moved out of pit road and onto the racetrack once again as our second caution period of the day flies over north wilkesboro north carolina speedway we'll be right back Seventy-one of 400 laps completed in the Holly Farms 400, and Mark Martin is the leader. Daryl Waltrip running second. Third is Dale Earnhardt, and here is Michael Waltrip, who was just involved in a crash, and here it is from the side cam. He's on the inside of Sterling Marlin going in the corner. Oh, and he gets tagged, I guess, or maybe he just lost the car. I don't know what happened. But he gets sideways, that's for sure. There's the other car coming in. Why did Sterling Marlin spin? I didn't see any. Huh. It appeared as if Marlin was well ahead of uh, Michael, who was spinning. Maybe there was something on the track that must caused everybody to spin. Yeah. Exactly. There must have been something on the racetrack because Sterling Marlin was indeed a, a few feet in front of Michael Walter. I can see no contact at all. Well, anyway, Michael Walter was into the pit several laps and now, or several times rather, and now Lake Speed remains in the pits. 
Michael Waltrip did lose a lap on that uh, pit stop, as did Larry Pearson and uh, Sterling Marlin. All three of those guys that were involved in the crash up there did lose a lap, and Lake Speed is losing several laps as his car remains on pit road. And there are only 12 cars now on the lead lap with Mark Martin in the lead. We're about to go green once again as the lead is held by Mark Martin, Darrell Waltrip third, Rather, second, third is Dale Earnhardt, fourth, Ricky Rudd, and fifth is Rusty Wallace, sixth, Terry Labonte, seventh, Bill Elliott, eighth, Alan Kowicki, ninth position is Tommy Ellis, and tenth is Kit Schrader as the green flies on lap 76. Here comes Earnhardt on the outside. just ahead, but look at the battle up front. Some contact between Waltrip in 17 and Mark Martin in number six. Martin's on the outside of the track and losing spots. Well, his car is not working like it was earlier. Where did Earnhardt come from? He just blew by those guys on the outside. Jeff O'Dine trying to get by Darrell Waltrip. He's on the lap now. If he can get by Waltrip and then Earnhardt. Caution flag comes out. He gets his lap back. Here's a replay. Look at these three guys go in side by side into turn one, and there's a contact between Waltrip and Martin. Wow. That was very close. And Earnhardt, he took a chance going on the outside of those two cars and made it three abreast. But now he pulls away. Earnhardt is back in the lead of the Holly Farms 400 after Mark Martin was in the lead for a while. Let's get out to Jerry with a comment on Mark. Actually, we're going to talk about Dale Earnhardt, Bob. You know, we mentioned the fact that Earnhardt was so loose before that caution flag and dropping back. He came in. The crew asked him, Kurt Shelburne, and I said, hey, what do you want us to do? Earnhardt said, tighten it up. And Shelburne said, how much? He said, put a ton of bite in it. And we did, he said. And uh, we're going to really tighten it down. And they did. And look where he went. Look at the front. Boy, he, uh, they did something that made that car completely different. But when the race started earlier, remember, that's what Earnhardt did. He pulled away a few car lanes. Started coming back to the field, and that may happen again. Be interesting to see. But certainly with that bike, if they say in it, that'll help him some. Rusty Wallace in number 27 is back to fifth position. And there is Brett Bodine in car number 15 and Bill Elliott in number nine. Uh, Elliott is on the lead lap, but the number 15 car of Bodine is not. Kowicki in number seven is also on the lead lap. The cars that are on the lead lap are Dale Earnhardt, Darrell Waltrip, Ricky Rudd, Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, Bill Elliott, Alan Kowicki, Morgan Shepard, Ken Schrader, Ernie Irvin, and Tommy Ellis. Alan Kowicki finds himself in eighth position at the moment. Kowicki began this race from 17th position. That's where he is in Winston Cup points, or was before Charlotte. He moved to 13th at the end of 20 laps, was 10th at the end of 40, and now finds himself in eighth. And that's Morgan Shepard running there with him in car number 75. Here comes Harry Gant, number 33, with some damage on that car after an early race incident. Now, he's a lap down as a result of making a pit stop on the very first caution flag, and then he just simply couldn't get up through the field. And we're riding with Harry now. As you can see, well, there's... Mark Martin trying to get by Ricky Rudd and get back up in. Here's trouble on the front straightaway. Oh, Richard Petty, Kyle Petty, Hutt Strickland involved. Larry Pearson also becomes involved. Our... Here comes Jeff Bodine getting his lap back. Yes, he did. Some very heads up driving by Jeff Bodine. But there he are... saw an opening and went through it. There are two cars here on the main straightaway stopped. Hot Strickland at number 57 and Larry Pearson in 16. And there's some pretty serious damage to the front of Hot Strickland's car. We're not seeing it on camera, but I'm 
right above the car looking down. And now, as I looked down on the straightaway when this was going on, I saw uh, Richard Petty up on two wheels. The car came down on all four, but uh, it was a close moment for Richard Petty. There is Strickland's car, and there is Larry Pearson. He's sitting in his number 16 Chattanooga Chew car. Obviously okay. He's moving around inside. The two drivers who are second and third in the Champion Spark Plug Sears Rookie of the Year standing. Ted Strickland in second place. Larry Pearson in third place behind Nick Trickle in the rookie standings. So our third caution period of the day. As Hut Strickland gets out of his car, he's okay surveying the damage, and there is a lot of it on the front end. We're 88 laps in to the Holly Farms 400, and we'll be back right after this. Caution because of a crash coming off of corner number four, and the cars landed here on the main straightaway, and here's how it looked from our speed shot. See a car sideways on the inside, yeah. Kyle Petty down on the inside in the peak Pontiac. And there Larry Pearson gets tagged from behind. Richard Petty ran over somebody. Pearson stays up against the wall, and then Hut Strickland comes in behind him in car number 57. And with Hut Strickland is Dr. Dick Berger. We had quite a view of that whole thing. What did it look like to you? Well, I couldn't really tell too much there, Dick. You know, a bunch of cars were spinning there, and... Uh, you know, I seen Kyle up there spinning, and I, I, the, the car was in front of me was Larry Pearson, so that, that kind of had my view blocked. But, uh, you know, I got into the wall and got to Larry and tried to miss the whole deal and got right in the middle of it. You know, just no place to go. Your crew has been running up and down in front of us here, bringing tools to the garage area. Can you get this wreck fixed? Well, we're certainly going to try to. You know, we're in a race right now. We want to try to do as well as we can in these Winston Cup points. And, uh, you know, we're trying to sell that Heinz ketchup and get all our products out there, and that's just... You know, try to get as many laps as you can. Points are it. They sure are. He's going to go back to the garage area and help those guys, I'm sure. And Hut Strickland also wants to continue his streak. Only two drivers have been running at the finish of the previous eight races, Rusty and Hut. But there is Hut's car that uh, doesn't look too healthy at the moment. So the cars are being dragged off the racetrack and will be back to green before too long here at North Wilkesboro. There's the tremendous crowd that has turned out for this Winston Cup race number 26 of the 89 season, and the green flies once again. Darrell Walter, but number oh. 17 gets high, coming off of corner number four. The car slipped on him just a little bit. able to pass him, so Darrell holds on to second place, but that was a close moment for Darrell. Yes, it was. It looked like the front end broke loose on the car as he went into turn three and started off at turn four. He just, he just wouldn't cut all of a sudden. And now the car seems to be running okay. But, you know, we saw Sterling Marlin and, and uh, the Michael Walter spin a few laps go up in that corner. I just wonder if there's something in that corner causing these cars to do that. Well, I don't know. I'm going to tell. Gary Gannon, number 33, is a lap down. But everybody else is fighting for position here in this shot. As we're watching from Ricky Rudd's cockpit, Mark Martin is just ahead. Darrell Walter in the number 17 car. And then the leader of the race, Dale Earnhardt. Brett Bodine is also between Walter and Earnhardt. And Earnhardt has checked out on him. He's uh, about three or four seconds ahead right now. to go because you're right that he has some tremendous early strength on these restarts. Mark Martin, the driver of the Strohs light board, making a late season charge to the Winston Cup championship. There is Terry Labonte who has run very well today in the Junior Johnson and prepared car. Junior, of course, with more wins than any other car owner at this racetrack, which is located only a few miles from his shops. The body running pretty strong there on Ricky Rudd. 
as we look out the front windshield, I'll break your rest car, and he certainly is keeping tabs on Mark Martin up in front of him. Moving on the inside of the car number 15 of Fred Lodi. This is from Harry Gant's car as Terry Lamonti is just ahead. And has a good view of this action for position. The number 21 car is smoking on the racetrack. That is Tommy Neil, Ellis. Rather, Tommy Ellis in substitution for Neil Bonnet, who hopefully will be back in action next weekend at Rockingham. And Tommy brings the Sitco Ford prepared by the Wood Brothers in. Well, they're working on the right side as if it were tire smoke, and apparently it was. The right rear quarter panel had rubbed against it. You can see the, the different color on the sidewall of that tire, so he has gotten close to someone out there. Tommy goes a lap down. He's in a tight battle for the Bush Grand National Championship. That we will also uh, have a tape-delayed version of next weekend at Rockingham. Only two races to go in the Bush Grand National Series. The average speed at the end of 100 laps one-fourth of the distance, 83.179 miles an hour. Well, from inside Harry Kent or Ricky Rudd's automobile, it's easy to see how the fenders get knocked in on the tires at racetracks like Martinsville, North Wilkesboro, Sherman's short track. So you can see they're awfully close to each other through the corner. It's the final short track race of the decade in Winston Cup competition. Brett Bodine to the inside as the faster cars pass. Gant moving outside and going around Brett with these. Daryl Waldrop remains entrenched in second position. And we talked about this being the final short track race of the decade. And there you can see that Daryl Waldrop has won most short track races in the 1980s. 38% of them, as a matter of fact. Dale Earnhardt has won 20%. And now, Daryl Waltrip has just lost a spot, dropping from second to third as Mark Martin, at number six, was able to go around. We must have made Mark Martin mad showing that graphic because <laughs> he said, I'm going by the winner of the decade. <laughs> he got position on Daryl yeah, Martin's car seems to be back to the form now that he was earlier in the race. It might be that uh, he needs to run a while before those tires get to his liking and the car setup is to his liking and to this racetrack, and then he gets going. So Martin is second, followed by Darrell Waltrip, then come Rudd, Lamonti, and then Rusty Wallace. But Dale Earnhardt has pulled well ahead of everybody else as he's a half a straightaway now. There's the advantage. You can see the interval that Darryl, rather Dale Earnhardt has on the rest of the field. Boy, it's nice to run out there by yourself. Well, well, one and eight oh, oh, Wilson. Wilson has spun for the second time this afternoon. The car is off of the racetrack. It's right in the middle of the backstretch. It is off the racetrack. NASCAR officials see it. They have been talking about it, and the caution is coming out. There's also some debris on the racetrack. You can see right behind Rick Wilson. Yep, he's too close to the racing surface to leave sitting there. And he may be stuck. I don't know if he can... Uh, the, under, the suspension of the car might be hung on that road that we see going across from the infield because the car certainly isn't moving. Well, these cars are very low to the ground, and, and it's easy to to get them hung up. And it'll be interesting to see if we have pit stops this time around as Rick Wilson sits there helpless. Has it been too many laps since everybody was in for a pit stop? But here comes Dale Earnhardt. There is the Richard Childress crew waiting on him, and Jerry Punch will report. Leader Dale Earnhardt brings his Chevrolet Lumina to a halt the bar in the pit road, and he waves off the cold drink up fine and cleaning the windshield. Kurt Shelburne to the crew now. side tires on Mark Martin's car. You're on the crew cam. This is Robin Pemberton. Crew chief wearing this thing. He's just on the left front tire. We're watching to see who's going to be the first one out. They're having trouble with the left rear tire on Mark Martin's car. The crew has to get it up. Jerry punches with Darrell Walton. They have changed the right side tires and they have made a champion just for the time Chevrolet. They are now changing the left front tire. Eddie Dickerson now just Boy, 
boy, Darrell Waltrip got killed on that pit stop. He is all the way to the back of the field. Yeah, there are 13 cars in the lead lap now, and he will be 12th. Kenny Schrader is the last car to go out that is in the lead lap. So caution period number four in progress here at North Wilkesboro as Rick Wilson got off the racetrack in the backstretch, and we had a lot of activity on pit road there for a moment, but now everybody seems to be back on the racetrack, and we await the green flag once again. Back in a moment. Speedway under caution here. I'm standing with Jeff Bonani. Jeff, a lengthy pit stop for Darrell Walter, but you guys were checking a lot of things. What all did you do? Jerry, you know, on that last restart, Darrell and Brett Bodine got together, and Darrell said something felt like real funny up in the front end, so the car was just a little bit looser. We went ahead and made a small chassis adjustment on the right front, and then we had to make sure we didn't have nothing hung up on the left front, so rather than have a problem, you know, later on, you know, when we really needed to be getting in and out of the pits, we decided it's the best time to go ahead and evaluate what this, if there was a problem and make sure everything's okay, at least in his mind. And everything's okay. We just got to be careful come back up through there, but everything will be okay. Valuable time here in the pitch for the tied crew, but Darrell Waltrip has a lot of traffic to pass, and we're going green. Huh? He begins from 10th position, Darrell Waltrip does, as the lead is now held by Ernie Urban in car number two. Here he comes off the second corner and down the back stretch. Uh, Sterling Marlin is right alongside, and Dale Earnhardt is on the back bumper. Here comes Earnhardt to the inside. He well. passes Marlin. Is he going to pass Ernie Urban? Ernie yes. Urban did not make a pit stop, stayed out there, but looks like the car running off the well. And, then, and Marshall, this fellow had a super run going up there. And that car this weekend carrying Dinner Bell and Food Lion sponsorship instead of the traditional Kroger sponsorship. is in second position. Sterling Marlin is a lap down. Bill Elliott is in third. Mark Martin fourth. Ricky Rudd is fifth. And sixth is Rusty Wallace. So the two guys that are battling for the Winston Cup points are first and sixth at the moment with Earnhardt, the leader of the race. We're riding with Ricky Rudd. Martin going to the inside. Here comes Jeff Bodine. Remember, just a few laps ago, this five car, the white, and goal number five was a lap down. And now he is on the move. While this racing is going on, they're pushing the Kodak Film Osmobile of Rick Wilson into the garage area. After his encounter. Trouble over on the back stretch. Richard Petty is in the wall. Richard Petty against the retaining wall just out of turn number two. And it's Richard's second incident of the day, and it comes on lap 127. He was also involved in this melee down here on the straightaway that took out Hut Strickland and Larry Pearson. And now he does even more damage to the STP Pontiac, but keeps going. Here's a replay of what happened. A lot of cars running in there together. There's Mike Waltrip down on the inside, and Kyle Petty right on the inside of his dad, Richard Petty. They might have gotten together, and Richard spun to the outside. And you remember this incident down here on the straightaway. Kyle was also uh, involved in that. So it's been a tough afternoon for both Petties, Kyle and Richard. And both of them are in the pits right now. You can see a lot of damage to the STP Pontiac. And the 55 car, Bill Parsons, has some serious front-end damage to his car. He's coming down pit road. It looks like that someone stopped in front of him, and there, look at the nose on that car. Yeah. Well, here's a replay now from the side cam on Michael Waltrip's car. Well, there Michael goes on the inside of Brett Bodine. Looks like it clips him a little bit. There's Kyle Petty in the car number 42 up in front. And no, the car number 30 of Michael Waltrip hits Richard Petty and spins him around. Ooh, boy, oh, boy. That was a super shot from wow. the door. Richard Petty didn't like it too much. but <laughs> So they continue to look over the STP Pontiac as Kyle is right behind in the... Uh, other car. Let's go down to Dick Bergman, who's right there in the Petty Pit. 
Well, Bob Jenkins, the guy who's won the most races here at North Wilkesboro, isn't going to win today. Richard Petty up on pit road. His son is right behind him. Both cars are heavily damaged. Right now, they're working on the left rear corner of Richard Petty's car. And Jerry Punch is with the Kodak team. Jerry, what happened to those guys? Well, they are scampering around the car trying to get Rick Wilson back on the racetrack. We'll try to get a quick comment. We'll sneak in here. Rick, uh, what happened to the car? Something shorted out the car and it just killed the motor. Uh, right now we're trying to find a short or whatever it caused. It just killed the motor all of a sudden. Kyle was behind me. He dropped in the middle of the corner. He hit me. He spun me. Something wrong with the electrical system. Rick Wilson out of it. A lot of cars here in the garage are trying to get repaired. The Larry Pearson car working. They're working heavily on the Heinz car back here, you see. Trying to get all these guys back out and pick up some valuable points. Points could be very, very valuable. It could mean twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. From Harry Gann's bumper cam, first of all, the replay of this crash. You can see it way back in the background as it's coming up here. We're going, this is, uh, well, there's Richard Petty and Kyle. Looks like Kyle has slowed down and Richard Petty is trying to get by him when Michael Walter comes up and touches him in the left rear and around he goes. So that's how it was from Gant's bumper cam. Now here's the real time from Michael's side cam. Watch and listen to this. And Petty into the wall, and he's still in the pit area. And here we go green on lap 131 with Dale Earnhardt, the leader. Kyle Petty is behind the wall. Jeff Bodine, fifth, Ricky Rudd, sixth, and Rusty Wallace is now seventh, followed by Alan Kowicki, then Morgan Shepard, and Daryl Waldron. Bill Elliott got a terrible break on the restart with a slow car. So was on the inside trying to get their lap back. Bobby Hillen, Tommy Ellis, and Harry Ginn. Ginn's bumper cam once again with the pictures. Jeff Bodine moving to the inside of Mark Martin. Bill Elliott to the left. Ricky Rudd is in the green car behind Mark Martin. Jeff Bodine's car was not working too well at the first part of this race, but after he got his lap back, they made adjustments on it, and he is going to be a factor. He'd like to impress these Wilkes County, North Carolina fans here because he'll be driving for Junior Johnson next year. Good point. are just down the road in Rhonda, North Carolina. Now here's Bobby Hillen Jr. in the eight car. And we go inside Ricky Rudd's car as he battles alongside Mark Martin with Jimmy Spencer and Tommy Ellis just ahead. Now Spencer and Ellis are battling for position even though they're a lap down. They're battling for about the uh, 14th position. And Rusty Wallace has suddenly come back toward the front as he is racing with Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd. And Bill Elliott appears to be off the pace a little as he was a little slow coming off of corner number two. Everything appears to be okay. He might have just slipped up in the corner. It looks like that might have been what happened because he's certainly running up to speed now. Spencer in the Crisco car, number 88. here of Kyle Petty and Kyle is back in the garage here and just climbed out of the car. He must feel a little bit like a cue ball out there. Yeah, really, it is. I am. I feel like it. I'm, I left my pits early. That was my fault. And run the left front tire off. That spun out and caused a wreck out there. And then something happened to Rick's car. I run in the back of him. And when that happened, then it, I guess it knocked every, all the sheet metal up on top of the oil cooler and uh, got a little hot and overheated the oil. And I guess it spun a bearing. But I tell you, you know, it, it, the car was working good. We just got had to start in the back because of the points. I'd like to say hello to my wife, Patty, who's recovering from surgery, and she's at home right now. So I guess I'm not going to be a victory lane after all today. Kyle Petty out of it here at Wilkesboro. Now, 
Rusty Wallace is in the middle of a three-car battle, three abreast battle here, and he... Oh, he went right on in. Yeah, he doesn't appear to be playing it too conservative, at least at this point. He put his nose right in there. And here we are with Michael Waltrip's side cam once again with Rusty just ahead. There you can see that both Rick Wilson and Derek Cope are behind the wall as crews try to get their cars back into competition. Those that have dropped out, Bud Strickland, Larry Pearson, and Kyle Petty, who we just heard from. Position going in three and takes the spot away. That would be for fifth position. Mark Martin goes into fifth and Ricky Rudd is back to sixth. Let's go to Dr. Vic Bergen with a report on driver protocol. Well, this morning at the driver's meeting, Bob Jenkins, everybody was told that they need to pay special attention to the guys who are running for the championship. Competition director Dick Beatty told them, if you hit one of those guys, you better go find the other three and hit them too. If you give one of them an advantage, go find the other three and give them an advantage as well. Don't mess these people up. So if you're seeing some of the competitors give a little extra room to Earnhardt, to Rusty Wallace, to Mark Martin, to Darrell Waltrip, that's why they were told to do that by NASCAR. It really only makes sense because there is so much money on the line and so much prestige, really, for the winner of the Winston Cup. And I think that you hit the nail on the head when you said prestige. And to these guys, I really believe that it means more to, to win the championship than it does the money, than the money does. And here is Rusty Wallace now pulling alongside of Ricky Rudd. The Kodiak Pontiac on the inside. As they go down the back stretch. Wallace has about a half a car length on Ricky and now has completed the pass. So Rusty Wallace begins to move forward once again to the Holly Farms 400 Winston Cup race from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. We'll be back with more of our live coverage right after this. Back at North Wilkesboro, where Dale Earnhardt is leading the Holly Farms 400. In second place is Ernie Irvin in car number two. And Irvin has been holding on to that position for quite a number of laps. He started this race in 23rd position. He well, was in 17th at the end of 40 laps, moved up to 11th, led at the end of 120, and now is back in second position at the end of 160 laps. He's from Modesto, California and did grow up on the short tracks out on the west coast and we ask him has your short track background helped you in the last few winston cup races well you know i think anybody that's even stepping into winston cup you know has come from short track backgrounds and and that's basically all i ever ran you know martinsville is kind of a big track compared to what we ran on the west coast and things like that you know very few half miles a lot of quarter miles and third miles and and I think that really helped me at Martinsville. And, and I grew up racing on tires that were eight inches wide and had to learn to just ease that throttle on, you know. Ivan Baldwin, the guy I grew up with, he, uh, he taught me a long time ago, he says you gotta treat that throttle like it's, a, like it's an egg and you can't break it as you come off the, off the corner. And I had to do that all day at Martinsville and it worked. Well, he turned in the best performance of his Winston Cup career a couple of weeks ago, a sixth at Martinsville. Let's go to Jerry Punch. You can't be surprised to see how well Ernie Irvin is running here. Remember a couple of weeks ago in Martinville, Virginia, he was in the same car, the same short track Pontiac, and he had the best run and best finish of his young career. He finished sixth up there, an impressive afternoon in Martinville, Virginia. I tell you, they had an awfully good effort going up there, and they got the same thing going today. The fellow who's largely responsible for that is standing by with my colleague, Dick Bergeron. Dick? Along with Ernie Irvin's crew chief, Bob Johnson, Bob, it's an awfully good run, but can you keep this run going until the end of the day? I don't know, we'll see what happens. You know, it started away in the back because it landed up by points. It kind of hurt us, so we took a chance on that last stop. Seems to be working out pretty good, you know. We're already doing a heck of a job, and guys have been working hard the last seven, eight weeks to see what we can do. We hope we can hang on. They're hopeful. So Arnie Urban continues 
to hold on to second position. But he better not look behind him because of the blue <laughs> number six. Mark Martin, and folks, he is strong today. He's marched through this field and is up in third spot. Mark Martin, not too far behind him, is Jeff Bodine. And here comes Davey Allison in for an unscheduled pit stop. Davey has been in and out of the pits, and certainly the Hamilton Ford is not working right this afternoon. And to update you on a couple of others, Richard Petty and Lake Speed have both gone behind the wall. Rick Wilson is back out of the racetrack. And Derek Cope is behind the wall in the Pure Litter Pontiac as well. And Dale Jarrett has been in and out of the pits. He has overheating problems in the Hardy's Pontiac, so he's a number of laps down as well. Changing the tires on the right side of the Haviland Ford driven by Davey Allison as they put the hood down. But Davey is not having a very good day at all. Now, here is Mark Martin, who has passed Ernie Irvin, and so Mark Martin is in second. And there is Jeff Bodine, not too far behind Ernie Irvin, and Jeff Bodine, as we indicated earlier, is back on the lead lap, and Bodine is moving toward the front. He's up to fourth position now, and he was a lap down at one time. There's the interval between first and second, and you can see that Dale Earnhardt is well in command of this race. Daryl Waltrip in car number 17 is just ahead of his brother, Michael Waltrip, as we have Michael's side can in operation once again. And I don't know what they did on Daryl Waltrip's car on that pit stop, but they better undo it. Not as bad as he was earlier. He's in 10th at the moment. Daryl Waltrip in 10th. We're still 12 cars on the lead lap. There are Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, who was running second now in third place, and Jeff Bodine, Mark Martin, Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, Alan Kowicki, and here goes Rusty Wallace around Bill Elliott. That's for the fifth position. Morgan Shepard also still on the lead lap. Darrell Walker has mentioned Tim. Terry Labonte's 11th and Tim Schrader in 12th. Those are the 12 cars on the lead lap. It's a good side-by-side -side battle here. It was there just a moment ago as Wallace pulled right alongside Bill Elliott to try to pick up the position. And here are the two that finished first and second in Winston Cup points last year with Elliott coming out with a championship. And this year it is Rusty Wallace still trying to win his first championship. But this year, his nemesis, his opponent, is Dale Earnhardt. Did you see Rusty Wallace on last lap coming off turn four? He lost the back end just a little bit. He's going to try it again. Oh, he only did it again. He wiggled again. Yep. But you know, with a bias ply tire before, it really didn't bother. Ooh, he carries Bill in and says, hey, boy, let me buy. <laughs> but that didn't bother Rusty Wallace before the bias ply tire. But it seems like he's radials when they slip it really gives these fellas a fit they're not able to go on in the next corner the way they came off the last one all right now let's talk about what just happened here bill elliott of course we already heard that the drivers were told in the drivers meeting to give these guys a little bit of extra is that what bill elliott did knowing that last year he was in the position to win the winston cup no Okay. No, I, I no, think I mean, he was no. racing four positions the best he could, and Rusty, it took him a little while to get around. Now, once he got on the inside, Bill gave him some running room, but uh, I don't think he was just moving over and letting him go. What happened? Rusty Wallace went down in turn one, Bob, and he went in a little bit harder, and he literally carried Bill Elliott up the hill. Elliott had no choice except move up or run in the 27 car. Now, he didn't want to run in the 27, no. And there's Jimmy Spencer, Alan Kowicki, Ricky Rudd, Morgan Shepard in the race behind these fellows. And it's a good race. We Alan. talked about those 12 drivers in the lead lap. One lap down is Harry Gant in 13th. 14th is Jimmy Spencer. 15th is Michael Waltrip. Brett Bodine is 16th. 17th, Bobby Hill and Phil Parsons is 18th. And Dick Trickle, 19th. From 13th through 19th, they're all one lap down. Two laps down is Dave Marcus in 20th place. Sterling Marlin, 21st, two laps down. And Tommy Ellison, 22nd. He, too, is also two laps down. Spencer, Kowicki, and Rudd. Yeah, Watching from Rudd's vantage point.
saved the car. Oh, I, I was looking for a... Well, look, Spencer is really wiggly off at the fourth turn. I thought we were going to have a major crash there, but nothing happened. It's a lot of paint trading by Alan Kowicki and Jimmy Spencer. Oh, something happened okay, but they all came out with okay. That's why we have such a big crowd here today, fellas. Watch so the exciting. short track race. Ooh, Kowicki is slowing. Here comes Spencer on the inside and Rudd on the outside. Well, I think Kowicki might have just broken the traction momentarily. And Morgan Shepard going by. Darrell Walter joins in this. This is a great race. And you're right, Ned. That's why they're here. Spencer drops back. Here comes Rudd looking inside of Alan Kowicki off the corner. Put the bump into him just a little bit to get him a little bit out of shape, then pulled on the inside. And Kowicki wiggles a little, and here comes Morgan Shepard. Passed, and Alan and Darrell Waltrip also does. Yeah, that little wiggle cost him three positions. I know, it looks like he might have a tire going flat. It really does lead because his car is hammering awful right now. Yeah. Oh, he, here he spins on the straightaway. Just couldn't His left rear tire is flat. See, the left rear tire is completely flat. And Jimmy Spencer had just committed himself to come into the pits. He's coming, you can see his car on the right of the screen. He's coming on down pit road as the caution flag waves. There you can see that left rear tire on Kowicki's car is completely flat. Allen gets it headed in the right direction, but the fifth caution flag of the day is out on lap 183 as Allen Kowicki loses control coming off of corner four. And here's a replay. You know, he's lucky because he was right in front of Michael Waltrip and Terry Labonte. Both those fellows able to miss him. Also, Rick Wilson. And he was able to not hit the wall too hard on the inside. I think he'll be okay if he comes in and gets some tires on it. Here he is again, going around. And you can see he just backs it gently into the wall on the inside. Don't think that did too much damage. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's in Earnhardt's pit. It'll be a four-tire change for the leader, Dale Earnhardt. Kirk Shelburne and the crew come running around the car. David Smith, Will Lynn. Smith slides the jack beneath the car. Let's go up to Dick Bergen while Kyle Penny's going to get in a car. Dick? Everybody else is changing tires. Sterling Marlin just came out of the car, and he is some wobbly. He is not feeling well. Sterling Marlin ill. Kyle Petty in the car now, strapping in. And Jerry Punch is in ball trip. Jerry? That's my tires on Ty Chevrolet. The crew now. Yep, Hammond, Sandy Jones, Eddie Dickerson. Drop the car. Down the way. The leader, four tires. Back to turn one. Gentlemen. So Darrell Walter moves back out. So does Terry Labonte. And the seven car of Alan Kowicki still has the flat tire. But it's, not the, it's the right rear. <laughs> yeah, the so, left rear was flat a while ago. Now the right rear is flat. Both of his rear tires are flat. Now this is going to be a real... Uh, see, they don't even know the right rear is flat yet. Well, he's going to find out in a minute. If he, does. Well, he was trying to get back out and not lose a lap yep. in the pits, but he did go the lap down. He would have been much better off to have stayed in there. But like I say, they didn't know that. They knew that left rear tire was flat. But they didn't know the right rear was flat. Now he's going to have to encircle the entire track and come back in for a change on the right side. We'll be back with more from North Wilkesboro. Track facts are brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil. The big Q stands for quality, always has, always will. During the 60s and 70s, the NASCAR teams would refuel their cars using the old-fashioned gas cap, much like you would have on your production car today. But then the Air Force came up with an ingenious idea, the in-flight refueling system that adapted perfectly to NASCAR racing. This is the probe that would connect to the gas can. This is a receptacle, just like what's in the car here. When they come together, it opens up both valves and lets the fuel flow into the race car. When they break away, it's, this ring will seal against there and there will be no fuel leaks. Very safe, very fast. Now this is how it's supposed to work. See the gas can just slips away? Oops, it didn't slip away. Richard Bostic, the gas man on the peak car, takes a header on pit road, and the gas can, does, it, it's 80 pounds. It doesn't slip out of there as, as easy as Gary Nelson had it slipping out in his hand. The top 10 here at North Wilkesboro in the Holly Farms 400. It's Earnhardt, Martin, Bodine, Wallace, and Elliott. Trader, Urban, Waltrip, Labonte, and Rudd. Very near 
the halfway point of the Holly Farms 400. They're the top five. Earnhardt, Bodine, Martin, Wallace, and Elliott. There are 11 cars on the lead lap, and if the race should end right now, Rusty Wallace would maintain his Winston Cup points lead. We have some good racing going on. This is um, somewhat back in the pack. That's Ernie Irvin in car number two. Alan Kowicki trying to move back up through the pack after his recent spin that caused our most recent period. That's Ken Schrader to the outside, and we move inside. Ricky Rudd's Quaker State Fuel. He's racing Schrader four position for the sixth position. Woohoo, 75. Morgan Shepard, Dave Marks made a little bit of contact coming off the fourth corner. Jerry Labonte, the red, white, number 11, and the orange and white 17 of Daryl Walter. Most of these guys are racing for position. Morgan Shepard is, uh, Ken Schrader, Terry Labonte, Daryl Walter. Here's Labonte working inside of Ken Schrader off number four. Schrader has really been backing up the last five or six laps. Yeah, he's he, just not handling well at all. He was running sixth, and I believe he's now back as much as ninth or tenth. Eleven cars on the lead lap now. There were 12, halfway point coming up. And, of course, uh, Alan Kowicki was the car that went off the lead lap when he spun and lost the lap. Yes. So now we settle in for the second half of the race as Dale Earnhardt, the leader, has been shown the cross flags indicating halfway through. There's the leader, Earnhardt, coming down to complete lap 201. And Jeff Bodine, the yellow and white, Levi Garrett Chevrolet, is running in second. We watch him from Harry Gantz. Bumper Cam and Phil Parsons and Brett Bodine are into the wall. That's up in turn four, just as they start off in turn four. Bodine's car is still moving. Harry Gantz, Harry Gantz trying to get by Earnhardt. Can't make it. Will not be able to do it as Dale crosses the line under caution. And we have had now seven caution periods. Bill Parsons brings out one on lap 202. Here's a replay of what happened. Well, they were both uh, sort of spinning when they came into the picture there. They were already loose and spinning up into the outside wall. Didn't look like Brett Bodine hit the wall. But Bill Parsons has some damage to his That's the water. automobile. That's water. That's the overflow on the radiator. That's where the tube goes back in the right rear quarter. And that's water running out of the Brown Skull automobile. So uh, looks like he's had some. Boy, it's really coming out, isn't it? Yeah, this is going to take a while to clean up. They'll have to get the car off the racetrack. And of course, have to get the moisture up from the racetrack before we go green again. Ken Schrader is in for a tire change. We mentioned how he was slipping backwards just before that yellow came out, and so this tire change may help. And a, a chassis adjustment as well. That's correct. We saw the fellow back in the rear window of the car on the right rear. He was making an adjustment to the chassis of the car. You know, we've talked so much about Charlotte and how uh, Earnhardt and Wallace swapped, uh, swapped the points lead, but we have failed or at least not paid very much attention to the guy who won that race, and that is Ken Schrader. And yeah, he had a tremendous run. He really did. I was going to say something about that a moment ago when him, Ernie Irvin running side by side. So it is Earnhardt who is leading at the moment just past the halfway point of the Holly Farms 400 here at North Wilkesboro. Back in a moment. We'll be back to North Wilkesboro, North Carolina Speedway in just a moment as Dale Earnhardt is the leader of the race and he's trying desperately to catch Rusty Wallace in the points championship. I think it's this time we should talk about the fact that North Wilkesboro no longer is on the Winston Cup schedule and how the sport was really changing at this time in 89 and continue to do so for about seven or eight more years. Yeah, the sport has just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I don't know where, the, where it all started. If you look at the attendance graphs that NASCAR will give to you, in 1988, the attendance took a big leap. I don't know if that's the year that everything started, but by 1989, 1990, things, the bigger racetracks, the, you had to cram more people in the racetracks because the purses dictated you had to have more people to pay bigger purses. And, of course, the final Winston Cup race at North Wilkesboro was run in 1996. You like rap music, Benny? Mm, yeah, okay. Well, back in 1989, rap was a big thing, and uh, our producers put together a thing called the Short Track Rap. 
I think you're going to like it. Well, I think you're going to like it. Stay tuned. Here it is. Bob Jenkins had Jared, Benny Parsons, Dr. Dick Bergman, and Dr. Jerry Punch back in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, as we bring to an end the short track racing of the 1980s, Benny. And I made a mistake, Bob, because, you know, all sports has a song about it, right? Well, I'll mention that to some of our producers, namely Neil Goldberg and Conrad Picciarello, that we needed a theme song or something that was stock car racing. They came up with a short track rap. Boy, little did we think that something concerning auto racing and especially short track auto racing could result in a rap, but it did, and here it is. When you're driving around at 110, you pull up behind someone think he's your friend. You pull alongside just to make a clean pass, and the next thing you know, he takes you to the grass. Short track. Short track. Short, short track. They're not too fast, but they're not real slow. The walls are real close when you're running toe to toe with the sheet metal hanging. Tire rubber banging, you better be prepared to do some real quick changes. Yeah, short track. Short track. Dale, Rusty, Mark Dale, Bill. They're running for the cup to make a real big kill. The stakes are real high on these real small tracks, so you better be prepared to do a short track rap. Short, 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 short track. That's the short track rap, and that's an indication of what can happen in short track competition. That is Phil Parsons' car, and uh, we move into the 1990s with that little rap song there. Well, and again, I think it fits the situation of the short tracks, because look at Phil's car as he crawls out of the automobile. But we've had lots of cars torn up like that today. Yes, sir, and every time you go to the short track, the competition that you have today, you're going to see a lot of that kind of thing going on. And we'll continue to bring you the action here on ESPN. There's a shot from our bumper cam. And here's Brett Bodine moving back out onto the racetrack. He's showing a considerable amount of damage. That is the car forced to crash with Bill Parsons up there in turn number three. And by the way, the track crew is still up there trying to get the moisture out of the racetrack. So it's going to be a couple of more laps before we can get back into a racing situation and a green flag. We are live at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina for the Holly Farms 400. It's Dale Earnhardt now being challenged by Jeff Bodine. What a comeback story this is for Jeff Bodine. A lap down earlier, got his lap back when we had a big crash on the front straightaway. Now trying to take the lead away from Dale Earnhardt in the Goodrich Chevrolet. Car number 33 is in 12th position, one lap down. So he is simply trying to get back on the lead lap as we ride with him. 215 laps are completed. Rusty Wallace is running fourth. Mark Martin is third. to lead this race so far today. Earnhardt, Mark Martin, and Ernie Irvin. So, of the point leaders, Earnhardt and Martin are those that have gained the five points, and Earnhardt is going to get pretty close to leading the most laps here before too long, which will be another five points. Good racing here. Ricky Rudd, car 26. That's Bobby Hill in the number eight. The 21 is driven by Tommy Ellis. Now, Rudd is in seventh position on the lead lap. Bobby Hill is a two laps down in 14. The 21 car is also two laps down. That, of course, is Tommy Ellis. Morgan Shepard is there on the right side of your screen. 75 of Morgan Shepard is on the lead lap. There is Daryl Waltrip, who is also on the lead lap. And Ken Schrader at number 25. So is number 11. So we have three cars running right here that are battling for position. Waltrip, Labonte, and Schrader. And we're watching from the side cam of Michael Waltrip who is 20th position two laps down. Well, ever since Darrell Walter made that extended pit stop to make the adjustment on the chassis, he has found himself in some very, very heavy traffic back there, and is that the help it goes? Contact there between Tommy Ellis and Darrell Waldrop. 
when we keep talking about short about track position, that's what we're talking about. Making those good pit stops so you always are back out at the front of the pack and not having to worry about traffic ladder like Darrell Walton and Michael are concerned with now because it is awfully heavy back here. side cam was in Michigan and quite frankly it wasn't too exciting but since we have gotten on the short track the side cam can really show us some action. It really does and we're able to see behind those cars and see the contact between those cars. Brent Bodine has a flat right front. Dick Bergeron. Well Bob Jenkins he's got a little more than a flat right front. He also hit the wall in the process and whether that tire became flat after he hit the wall before it was hard to tell but he suffered a good one going into the first corner. Uh, he's had a tough time today. The nose of the car is damaged. Left side of the car is damaged. He's patiently sitting here waiting for the button work crew to get this car all squared away. Meanwhile, on the racetrack, it is Ernie Irvin trying to fend off Bill Elliott and Alan Kowicki. Now, remember, Kowicki lost two laps a while ago when he spun here on the main straightaway. He lost one lap while he was sitting on the racetrack and then lost another lap in the pits. But 2, 9, and 26 are still on the lead lap. And Ernie Irvin was able to pass Bill Elliott and pull five or six car lengths ahead of him. Super run today for Ernie Irvin. You mentioned a moment ago, today he's sponsored by Dinner Bell, which is normally the Winkle sponsorship. But because the Winkle team was not up in the points enough to be able to run this race, that's why Ernie Irvin put Dinner Bell on the side of the car with Kroger's blessing. Check our Napa race summary to this point. Dale Earnhardt leads, has left one, uh, led 167 of the 220 laps at an average speed of 87.986 miles an hour. We've had three leaders, four lead changes, seven caution periods, total of 46 laps, and 11 cars are on the lead lap. Those that are out of the race, Hutt Strickland, Kyle Petty, Richard Petty, and Phil Parsons. Those who have picked up five Winston Cup bonus points for leading include Earnhardt, Martin, and Ernie Irvin. And as we mentioned, Dale Earnhardt is getting very close to leading the most laps during the day. He's not quite to that point yet that he can claim it, but it won't be too long if he stays out there, and that is another five bonus points. He has led all but 53 laps today, Dale Earnhardt. Kowicki and Bill Elliott side by side. I started to say that Kowicki had finally taken the spot of Faye, but no, Elliott came back on the outside. But now Kowicki does have the spot, and Ricky Rudd tries to move alongside the nine car. And that will be for position. That was only track position as far as Kowicki was concerned, because we mentioned he is two laps down. Here's Ernie Irvin trying to pass Rusty Wallace. Don't you know this makes Ernie feel about as good as he possibly can to pass Rusty Wallace, and he goes by him. Let's go to Dick Bergeron for a comment on the two car as Ernie Irvin salutes and waves to Rusty Wallace as he passes. Well, Bob Jenkins, Jeff Prospike, spotter down here, has been listening to the radio communication between Ernie Irvin and his crew, and it has been absolutely incredible. Ernie, just a few moments ago, radioed to the crew saying, let me get this straight. You want me to pass all the cars, save the tires, don't wreck, and win the race. Just hit back one word. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much of an assignment, is it? Well, uh, Irvin, Irvin has moved to fourth position, dropping Rusty Wallace back to fifth. A great run by Ernie. Well, another fellow that ran good at Martinsville along with Ernie Irvin was Dale Jerry, who had his best finish ever, but he has taken the hardest Pontiac to the garage and out of the race. And as he was going into the garage, Lake Speed was coming back out of the garage. Speed has been in the garage area a long time, but now is back out there in competition. We focus in, meanwhile, on the battle for second position. Jeff Bodine and Mark Martin. Here again, we see the green and white skull car was able to get by Jeff Bodine laps ago. Now Mark Martin has run Jeff down. Blue number six, that's Mark Martin, who throws wide fourth Thunderbird, and he has position on Bodine. And 
that's Dick Trickle just behind these two as they race for position. Martin has the inside line, and here comes Dick Trickle in the number 84 car, and Mark Martin is going to go into second spot. Now, Dick Trickle, under normal circumstances, would be in Nashville, Tennessee today for the All-American 400, a race that brings together top short track, track drivers from all over the country in various sanctioning organizations. But because of his, the rain out we had here two weeks ago and his commitment to Winston Cup, he is here today. But he said in the uh, moments before this race that his heart really was in Nashville because he knew he could win that race. There must have been a song about that sometime along. My heart's in Nashville, but my heart's in North Fork No, is that the back of Well, it can't be any better than the rap song that we just heard on the short track races. Mark Martin, second position now. Jeff Bodine is in third. Dick Trickle, by the way, two laps down in 13. And Mark Martin is running four and one quarter seconds behind Dale Earnhardt. So Earnhardt is sort of checked out on once again. Well, too long ago that we saw Jeff Bedard battling Earnhardt for the front position, then Earnhardt just started pulling away. Ernie Irvin is fourth and Rusty Wallace is fifth. But you know, Mark Martin's car seems to get better as the race wears on. Just like at Dover, Delaware, when we saw the race up there about a month ago, his car got a little bit better as the race wore on. And uh, if this thing were to stay green the rest of the day, I'm not sure that Mark Martin will win the race. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's caught up with uh, Dale Jarrett. Well, Bob, a couple of weeks ago, this young driver led nearly 100 laps in Martinsville, Virginia. But today, Dale, it wasn't to be your day. From the very beginning, you just had trouble. People trying to run over you out of turn four. But what finally put you out? Well, we've been running hot about the last 100 laps. And apparently, we've got a head gasket going or something. We've just been trying to nurse it around and uh, just finally gave up before we tore the engine all to pieces and, and got somebody else some trouble out there. So this wasn't a good day for the Hardy Pontiac. Starting that far back, we didn't have a bad car. I uh, got hit earlier and spun out, but uh, that didn't hurt us too bad. But uh, you know, being all the way back there just hurt our chances of uh, having a good run here today. Dale Jarrett out of the Hardy's Pontiac. And there is the leader, Dale Earnhardt. We haven't seen him in a while simply because he's running by himself, well in command of this race, and about a half a straightaway ahead of second place Mark Martin. Pretty much all his way so far in this event as he tries to recapture the points lead in the battle for the Winston Cup. We'll be back in just a moment. Darrell Waltrip is having trouble on the track. He's dropped back numerous positions. Jerry Punch is there to report on the trouble. There's a discussion going on behind me between Sandy Jones, Jeff Hammond, and the crew. Apparently, Darrell Waltrip has lost some brakes on the car. Trying to pump the pedal to get a little bit of brake, but he's having to slow down. They have been showing some smoke, possibly they may have cut a brake line, they may have some brake fluid leaking through the car. The NASCAR official is standing there talking to the people in the tower. They in turn are talking to Jeff Amherst and the tie crew. A tough break for Darrell Walker and the tie Chevrolet. Darrell had remained on the lead lap and remained in the top ten, but now this problem has a few positions. Let's check the top 10 with 248 laps completed. It's Earnhardt leading with Mark Martin second, then Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin, and Rusty Wallace. Six through 10, Ricky Rudd, Bill Elliott, Morgan Shepard, Terry Labonte, and Ken Schrader. And the 11th car, the only other one on the lead lap would be Darrell Walters. Now, if the race were to end right now, Rusty Wallace would maintain his Winston Cup points lead over Dale Earnhardt by just five, and Mark Martin would be 137 behind. And, you know, Darrell Walter going into this race still had a mathematical shot at the Winston Cup championship, and the problems that he's having right now is just going to put him further behind, and, you know, with only three races remaining, he might not have a shot after today. Today we go next Sunday to Rockingham. There's second place, Mark Martin. And he, you know, Mark Martin drives this drives really strange because he's backing off, going in the corners a little earlier than some of the other cars. But once he gets in the corner, he's able to nail that throttle and drive off. And it appears to me like that Mark Martin has just radically changed his style because of the radial tires. What we have right now on bias ply tires slips and slides 
just like I like it. You know, the back slides a little bit more than the front does, and we can run as hard as we want to run, and we don't have to worry about losing it. We just slip and slide. Uh, when we put the radials on and try to do that, I crash. It's that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. Well, he hasn't, ooh, he's got a little bit sideways there, but he hasn't crashed today. But, um, as I mentioned, two weeks ago in practice on Friday, he spun out three times trying to qualify. Now the number five car driven by Jeff Bodine. That's your third place machine at the moment. Bodine, a lap down earlier with the contest, got it back in a caution period and finds himself third. Dick Bergeron is with Waddell Wilson. Well, you have to be pleased with your run this afternoon because you run down those guys ahead of you, Waddell. Well, right now, Jeff says the car is loose again, but that's Will Sparrow. You know, normally here in the middle of the race, on the cars get very loose, but we thought we had it cured today, but it's loose again. But hopefully we can get a caution and get it fixed. He runs real well here today. He's got a good shot at it. Indeed, he does. Any one of these guys that are on the lead lap has a chance at the victory. We still have quite a distance to go in this race, well over 100 laps, as we watch Dick Trickle now put some pressure on Jeff Bodine. Trickle is a couple of laps down at Miller High Line Viewing. Well, Bob, now we only have nine cars on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt just lapped Ken Schrader, who's running in the 10th position. Terry Labonte is the next car, but he's, uh, he's pretty far. He's a full straightaway ahead of Earnhardt, so he's in no danger of going a lap down, but Rusty Wallace is in danger of losing fifth place. So that means if the race were to end right now, they would be tied for the point lead. That's right. From out the back glass of Ricky Rudd's car, looking at Rusty Wallace, Ricky just passed him to move into fifth. Wallace's car not working the way that we normally see that Kodiak Pontiac work on a short track. You know, I was on the Speed Week show with Bob Jenkins on Thursday evening, and I asked that Bob asked me who I felt like would have the advantage. And I said Earnhardt because Rusty did not run well here in the spring. And uh, whatever they have wrong in the spring, it seems to be has popped back up again because you're right, Ned. Rusty Wallace is not running as well as we normally see him run. He really hasn't been in the, in the hunt all day. He's never been up into a position to challenge for the lead. No, he, he has run good, but but just not not as good as he normally does. Let's go to the pits with Dick Bergen, who is with the rest of the crew team, Barry Dodson. Well, Barry, you guys are not running in the leaders at this point. Can you adjust the car? What's wrong with it? We need to adjust it, Dick. The thing's too tight. We thought the track would loosen up. It hadn't happened on this radial tire. We just need a caution to get about two rounds of wedge out of it, and we should be a lot better. Well, one of the guys who's run real strong all day is the number six, Mark Martin. His crew chief with Jerry Punch. Jerry? Well, Steve Mill standing with me. You don't say hard work doesn't pay off. Steve, they say there are two kinds of chassis, front steer and rear steer. You had a rear steer and you couldn't win with it. You had a front steer and you weren't satisfied. So what you did, I'm told, you brought a front steer car here and put a rear steer setup under it. People said you were crazy, but you're outrunning most of them. Well, we're outrunning everybody but one rear so maybe we should have brought the rear steer, but the car's working awful good. What keeps happening is that we're having a race, a bunch of lap cars, and people that can run as good as us when they throw the green flag. So Dale gets out on fresh tires and drives away. Mark has to use his tires up to get back in position, so by the time we're clear, our tires are gone. So we're just kind of waiting on the car to hope we can do a better job on the next stop. One of the hardest working crews and drivers in the business. They are due for a win. Crash this might come today. Turn four, not necessarily a crash, but a spin at least. And we thought we were going to see a yellow flag that was very much needed by Steve Beal and Waddell Wilson and the others, but that didn't happen. Jimmy Spencer was the car that got sideways up in turn four. Right in front of Rusty Wallace, I might add. <laughs> but Rusty was able to drive by him. So no caution. Dale Earnhardt will definitely pick up the five bonus points as lap leader for today, having led over 200. Right now we're at 266. Dale Earnhardt from Kannapolis, North Carolina, driver of the GM Goodrich Chevrolet car number three, is leading the Holly Farms 400. And Rusty Wallace finds himself in sixth position. So if the race were to end right now, the drivers would be tied. Here's our side cam as we look at Rusty.
and looked at this battle. Ernie Irvin going on the inside of Jeff Bodine and taking over the fourth position. So Ernie Irvin continues to march back towards the front. He was up there in second place for a long, long time. Led the race. He's one of only three drivers to have led this race today. And then a pit stop during a caution flag put him back in the field, but he's worked his way back now to fourth place. So he's trying to better his sixth place finish, which was the best of his career a few weeks ago at Martinsville. And if you wonder who's third, it's Ricky Rudd. He was able to get by Jeff Bone just, Jeff Bone I just a moment ago. And here is Michael Waltrip moving alongside of Ricky Wallace and in fact passing Rusty. So Rusty may have a problem. Daryl Waltrip is in. Jerry Punch is there. The winningest short track driver of the decade, 34th career short track wins in the 80s, but he's rolling very slowly down pit road. He does not have any brakes, and Billy Wilbur, Jeff Hammond, and the crew will raise the hood and try to get the brakes fixed. They think they probably have a brake line that has been severed in the left front of the car, and they are going to try to push the car down here and get it fixed. But a nine-time winner of Wolf Plus Speedway will not win today. Leader, they alert her to heavy traffic. Sterling Marlin and now Dave Marcus is just ahead in the Life Boy Chevrolet. Earnhardt continues to pull away from the car number six of Mark Martin. He's building to about a six-point lead now, but the only car on the racetrack that is running as fast as Dale Earnhardt is Harry Gant. Gant is a lap down, but we'll see him. We watch Earnhardt go into the turn. We'll see Gant come into the picture here very quickly. Now you can see Earnhardt at the front of him, so he's not too far behind. Loops just ahead of Rusty Wallace, but Rusty manages to get by with a, without being touched. And here comes Harry again, going to get his lap back. Yes, he does. Oh, he almost got squeezed against the wall by Dave Marcus, but Dan did indeed, indeed get the lap back. He Woo. will be a fellow to be reckoned with, gentlemen, in the last half of this race. Wow, all kinds of action there. Rusty Wallace just missed getting hit or hitting uh, Michael Waltrip and then Gant getting the lap back but nearly getting squeezed against the wall by Dave Marcus and there is Michael Waltrip who caused this yellow by spinning in turn four and he was directly in front of oh, Rusty Wall he was he <laughs> directly yeah Rusty's got a feel that he's living a charmed life oh that Michael is having, having a few there. words to say to Rusty Wallace there might have been yeah. a bit of contact between the two boys the left before there had been some i looked at it out on the racetrack and there had been a little contact between them and maybe there was a little bit more that time around the leader in the pits jerry punch right there to call it hard hearts good rich chevrolet crew working on the car it'll be a four tire change as per usual lots of scrapes and scratches on the left side of the good rich chevrolet indicating a lot of battle scars let's go up to mark martin pitch and dick Bergman. They're also going to do a four-tire change up here. Rusty Wallace team as well doing a four-tire change. Wallace changing the wedge on their car. The crew from Mark Martin almost done with their tire change. Here he goes. Great stop for Mark Martin. He's out. But Dale Earnhardt without first. Here comes everybody else. There goes Rusty. There he goes. But I got a little bit late. Ernie Irvin was also late getting out. That's Ken Schrader. In fact, he probably will be at the end of the lead lap. He will be probably the 10th car on the lead lap. Let's take a look at the replay of Michael Waltrip's spin. Here he is just behind Jeff Bodine. And ahead, remember, of Rusty Wallace. Moving into turn three, the spin will occur in turn four. It's coming up here shortly. There he goes. Round he goes. We'll see Rusty in just a moment. Well, they never get to now we'll see him. There he there is. He is. <laughs> Amazing. But Rusty got through unscathed. Michael Waltrip is uh, seeing his brother Daryl in once again. Jerry punches right there. Back on pit road here getting more service on the tide Chevrolet as they have tried to get the brakes fixed. Then they have come back in and changed the tires on the car. They are looking over the area of the master cylinder. Here Walter having his troubles here at a looks for a speedway. One driver is not having any problems. Is Dale Earnhardt? He shows the way. Thank you.
back in North Wilkesboro under green. 282 laps completed. Second place is being contested here as Dale Earnhardt once again has the lead. But Terry Labonte, Ricky Rudd, and Mark Martin are all three battling for second. Terry Labonte made a great pit stop in the Budweiser Ford. He was running about ninth position and came out in third after the pit stop. And regardless of where he is, And right now, Terry is second, chasing down the leader, Earnhardt. Bob, they had about 120 laps to go when the green flag waved again. I think they'll be able to go the rest of the way if there is not another caution. Now, let's take a look at the pit stop summary. Earnhardt uh, stayed the same. Terry Labonte, look at the positions that he gained on that pit stop. He went in ninth and came out third. Rudd lost one position, and Ernie Irvin lost three positions. Dale Earnhardt continues to lead. He has, for most of the race, has already picked up the five bonus points for leading the most. There is Rusty Wallace, along with Bill Elliott, as they go to the inside of the number eight car of Bobby Hillen Jr. and Dick Trickle. Here comes Ernie Irvin and Jeff Bodine and others that are on the lead lap. now so maybe they made that adjustment that he Ooh. some contact between Ernie and Bill Elliott as they came off the second corner both the cars got a little bit loose and there, there's there there contact once again Elliott and Urban are banging on each other now Jeff Bedine moves down on the inside of Bill Elliott to take over the position Elliott got caught on the outside can't get back down in to the low side of the racetrack. 75 car, Morgan Shepard is also on the lead lap of the green car. Harry Gant is working his way back up. Here's Ernie was trying to go by on the outside of the eight car. Bobby Hill and Jeff Bodine, as soon as he moved out, took advantage, dived on the inside of him. But Hill is up there. Now, what's going to happen? Here's Bodine moving to the inside off the fourth corner. And on pass Bobby Hill and though. now in sixth. Ernie Irvin is in seventh. Eighth is Elliott. Ninth, Morgan Shepard. And tenth is Harry Gant. And Terry Labonte, meanwhile, is really closing in now on Dale Earnhardt. He's knocking down that advantage. You know, before that caution came out, we mentioned that he was in ninth position. He was about three quarters of the lap behind Earnhardt and was losing ground every lap. Now, after that great pit stop, coming out in third place, he has moved right up on the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt. And let's hear from the man himself, Junior Johnson. He's with Dick Berger. Well, here's the master of North Wilkesboro. Junior, can you pull it off? What can you do to win this? Well, I think we're real good shape. Uh, we did all the car testing here for the radio. It's hard just about it about three or four years ago. find out in about 115 laps. Well, we'll know then. Well, as you guys have said many times, catching is one thing, passing is another. And there are Terry Labonte's last three finishes. You can see his best is an 11th. Junior Johnson, by the way, 18 wins here at North Wilkesboro. Terry Labonte, his driver, is in second, and he is that close from the leader, Dale Earnhardt. We're glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon from Winston Cup Racing from North Wilkesboro. now just a few car lengths back of Earnhardt. Third is Mark Martin. Fourth, Ricky Rudd. Fifth is Jeff Bodine. Sixth is Rusty Wallace. Seventh, Elliott. Eighth is Harry Gant. Ninth is Morgan Shepard. And tenth is Ernie Urban. And those are the cars that are on the lead lap. It appears as though Earnhardt in the black three, the white red, number 11, the Monty. Match now. 
Here is Ernie Urban in number two as he continues to be on the lead lap, but instead of running in the top five, he now finds himself in 10th position. He has, re excuse me, Bob, he has really been in some heavy traffic. He, Barry Gant, and Morgan Shepard, Bill Elliott were all racing for position there with some lap cars. They were trying to get around Bobby Hillen and Jimmy Spencer, and Ernie got pushed a little high coming off of turn four, and that cost him several positions. Morgan Shepard running alongside of the 88 car of Jimmy Spencer as they touch. And Michael Waltrip is in the pit area. Now, that's the reason why we're not showing you our sign cam shots that we had for you earlier in the race. But Michael Waltrip is in the pits, and the hood is up on that car as they work on it and try to get it back out there. There's Harry Gant trying to pass Bill Elliott. This is for about seventh spot, and Sterling Marlin is spun coming off the fourth corner. Kyle Petty driving that car now. He got in it a little while ago. I assume he's still in it. Kyle Petty. There is Kyle Petty in the 94 car as the caution comes out for the ninth time this afternoon. The Ultra Sunoco Oldsmobile headed backwards on the racetrack. That's Sterling Marlin's car, but again, we assume that Kyle Petty is still in it as he relieved Sterling a few laps ago. Okay, we hit the stop time again. No question but what they could go the rest of the way from here. Of course, they could have anyway. As far as gas was concerned, they only had 120 laps to go when the green flag waved before, but now the caution out, and I'll bet they'll all come in for new tires. We shall see in a half a lap. This is the break that Harry Gant needed because, as the Mayor Jared mentioned, he was an awfully fast race car, but in the middle of heavy traffic, Earnhardt had pulled away for about a half lap advantage. Now, Harry Gant able to make a pit stop and pull up in about fifth or sixth spot behind Earnhardt. Let's see if they pit. Yep, here comes Dale Earnhardt. Jerry Punch will call the stops by the leader. Dale Earnhardt brings a good red Chevrolet in. He's on top of your screen, Terry Labonte. In the car number 11, on the bottom of your screen, Earnhardt almost, almost overshoots the pit. They're working on the car. Right side charge for Terry Labonte. Likewise, that's for Dale Earnhardt in the good red Chevrolet. Kurt Shepard in the crew now going to the left side. Same way with Labonte. Evidently, Mark Martin only took on two tires because he beat them all out. So Mark Martin should be the leader of this race once we restart it because he got out ahead of both of them. I think he only took on right side tires. Well, we will be answering that question in just a few moments. Meanwhile, we're going to take another break while we are under caution here at North Wilkesboro in the Holly Farms 400. Stay with us. just taken the green flag and Mark Martin has the lead but is he going to be able to hold it? Here comes Earnhardt on the outside and no, Dale takes it away. Wow. Less than a lap from the resumption of the race, Earnhardt blows around Mark Martin and resumes command. On the outside too. Mark Martin just can't get going on the restarts and early on. See, Ricky Rudd is going to try to take second away going down the back right away. Well, Martin only took on two we did confirm that, and I think that was a mistake. Let's uh, go to Dick Bergeron, who's with Steve Beal, and he can tell us the strategy in this. Well, Mark, you only took two, and everybody else took four. Do you know which you had taken four? Well, we've been too tight all the time after, after a restart on new tires, and we need, really need to race to run a long time under the green. It not been happening, so we decided we got two tires. We'll be loose enough to run the last 90 laps. Maybe be in good shape. It's just a gamble. We'll see what happens. It's not over yet. Last, last week in Charlotte, when everybody else took us, uh, Teams up and down pit road trying to get that elusive first win. Mark Martin is now fourth, and right behind him is Bill Elliott. It's Earnhardt, Rudd, Labonte, then Martin, then here comes Bill Elliott. Jeff Bodine is next, followed by Morgan Shepard, and then Rusty Wallace. And then Ernie Urban and Harry Kent. Kent came out in tenth place, so Benny, that uh, what we thought helped him a great deal there didn't help him quite as much because he, he came out in 10th out of the pits. No, it didn't. Because by the time he gets back up to fourth or fifth, he'll still be a lap, half lap down. Jeff Bodine is really all over Bill Elliott for fifth position. Elliott has 
run a good race today, but, but he, he hasn't been a factor as far as running up front. Now he gets a little tap from Jeff Bodine, but he has kept the car in the lead lap all day, so you got to hand it to him. He's driven a great race. I tell you what, this has been one of Bill Elliott's better uh, races on a shorter racetrack. Although he did win Bristol a couple years ago. When he and that fellow right beside him got together and gave us a very exciting run at the Bristol. Earlier this year here at North Wilkesboro in the first Union 400, Bill Elliott finished 22nd. And Jeff Bodine is passing him now down the back stretch. Elliott a little reluctant to give up the position, but he finally has to. And Jeff Bodine goes to fifth. Morgan Shepard, Rusty Wallace, Harry again. Cars on the lead lap. Also, Kenny Schrader, the orange car, maroon car behind Ernie. No, he's a lap down. Schrader is yeah, a lap down. Yeah, Earnhardt lap down. Uh, there is Rusty Wallace, who is just ahead of Harry Gant. Running in eighth place. And I'll tell you what, yeah. now, if the race were to end, Rusty would lose the lead. Yes, he would. Dale Earnhardt would be in the lead, I believe, by 10 points. Point. Nine or 10. Well, you know, in the Charlotte Observer today, Tom Higgins wrote, Rusty Wall, a quote from Rusty Wallace. He said, I feel like I will lose the championship, the lead points back chase. to Earnhardt, right. the points chase, but I'm still going to win the championship. There right. you can see some of the cars that are out of the race, and Rick Wilson and Derek Cope remain behind the wall. That is interesting that Rusty would say he thinks he's going to lose the points lead, but eventually lose the championship. Now, coming up, and by the way, the last three races will be here on ESPN for you to enjoy as you follow the Winston Cup battle with us next Sunday at Rockingham, North Carolina, North Carolina Motor Speedway. Then a couple of weeks after that, it'll be Phoenix, Arizona. Our second visit to that track for Winston Cup competition. We'll close it out in Atlanta. Harry Gant had a nose up under Rusty Wallace, but they Gant saw Larry Pearson up in front of him, and he had to back off, get down on the inside of the track. He'll get another one out of here. No in-car shots at the moment because our helicopter has had to land for fuel. We back up before the end of the race, hopefully. As we watch Rusty Wallace. And Jeff Bodine has just passed Mark Martin to take the fourth spot away. Levi Garrett Chevrolet running awfully strong today. Bodine doing a super job getting through this traffic. He's a little less than three seconds behind Dale Earnhardt now. We'll clock him in a few more laps and see if he's able to pick up on him once he got out in the rear round. Labonte, then Bill, uh, Jeff Bodine, and Mark Martin, followed by Elliott, then Shepard, Gant, Rusty Wallace, and Ernie Irvin. So here he has picked up eight spot. The 11 car of Labonte. Well, Bob, that car doesn't seem to be as strong as it was before that last caution. He was able to run with Earnhardt before they changed powers this last time. Now Ricky Rudd is the man up there in second place and keeping Earnhardt in tow, although he's not uh, threatening to take over the lead right now, but the 11 car just isn't running quite as strong as it did. Really doesn't appear anyone has anything for Dale Earnhardt in that good wrench Chevrolet this afternoon. He looks, he looks to be the dominant car and led most laps, and every time there's a restart, he simply just pulls away from the competition. We've given you those drivers that are in the top 10. 11th a lap down is Schrader. 12th, two laps down is Alan Kowicki. 13th, also two laps down is Dick Trickle. 14th position is Dave Marcus. 15th, three laps down is the number eight car driven by Bobby Hillen. Then in 16th position, it's the 21 driven by Tommy Ellis. Well, we haven't seen any instances of blown engines this afternoon here at North Wilkesboro. As a matter of fact, what happens when an engine blows up? Well, Dr. Jerry Punch tells us it's a bit of a misnomer in this track bag. Track Packs are brought to you by the Robert Bosch Corporation, makers of Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. You've all heard us talking about someone blowing up a motor during a race and the big plume of smoke will come out and the safety trucks are on the track for a few laps. Well, they really don't blow up a motor, they actually blow down. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look here in the side of this oil pan. 
for this unfortunate driver. A large hole here, race fans, that actually shouldn't be here. It's where part of the crank and some of the rods came through the side of the oil pan, and quarts and quarts of oil were dumped on the racetrack. A tough break for this driver, a tough break for any driver in a tight point battle, be it Bush Grand National or a Winston Cup. A blown motor. Clear evidence here that something you don't want to have. Nothing like that this afternoon, but the action has been hot and heavy on the racetrack as we're at the Holly Farms 400 with 332 laps completed. October of 1989, you're watching the North Wilkesboro Tyson Holly Farms 400 as our NASCAR marathon continues. Benny Parsons and I are here at Daytona USA. I don't think we've mentioned it, but and his advantage over Ricky Rudd is that much. Rudd in car number 26 is running in second position. Well, there's now, no contest there, but we have a contest for third spot. Jeff Bodine has caught Terry Labonte. And Jeff Bodine, the yellow and white car, is going to drive the red and white number 11 next year. So we know, as Ned Jarrett mentioned earlier, he wants to impress these North Wilkesboro fans and pass Labonte. We continue to pan back and show you the cars as they run on the racetrack, not in their running order. The uh, number 10 car, driven by Derek Cope, is running in 26th position, more than 20 laps down to the field. Behind Derek Cope is the 71 car of Dave Marcus. He is shown in 14th positions, 14th position, two laps down. Then comes Tommy Ellis in number 21, and he is three laps down in 16th position. And the car number six of Mark Martin. He, of course, is running in the fifth position. There's 28, Davey Allison. He's been in the pits all day. He's down in 22nd spot. 83 leg speed. He's had problems all day. He's now 24th currently in 24th position. He was in the pits a long time, as a matter of fact, in the garage area. There's Harry Gant, who's in the top 10 in the Skull Bandit. Yeah, he just passed Bill Elliott a little bit ago for the seventh position, I think it was. Car of Bill Elliott, also on the lead lap. He's running in seventh place. So Gant would be running in the sixth position now. Rusty Wallace, our eighth place car, the Kodiak Pontiac. And behind him, Alan Kowicki, who had lost two laps, two flat tires. There goes Alan down in turn one, the Xerox Ford. And then we see Morgan Shepard right behind him, 74 and 84 and 75 running side by side. Morgan is still in the lead lap, but he has dropped back the last few laps. In fact, he has dropped back to ninth position as Dick Trickle moves around him. And the car number 84 of Dick Trickle is 13th, two laps. Ernie Irvin is still on the lead lap. The 10th and final car on the lead lap in number two. The number 30 car is Michael Waldrop. He's been up and down all day and currently 21st. 57 car, Hut Strickland. We saw him make some collision with the wall earlier on. The rookie point thing, Dick Trickle continues to lead that. Hus Trickland had a tough day today. And Larry Pearson, who's also in the battle for the Winston, for the, for the uh, rookie of the year, is out of the race. Here's Bobby Hillen, who is 15th, three laps down. Jimmy Means, the Alka Salsa Pontiac. He's in 28th spot. Jimmy's had problems all day long. And right behind him, 25-88 at Ken Schrader, the winner last week at Charlotte, and Jimmy Spencer in the Crisco Pontiac. Good race going between these two fellows. Yes, Schrader is one lap down in 11th place, and Spencer is in 8th, 14th position. 18th some, position, a big part. Some four laps down. And those are the cars that are on the racetrack as we're back to our leader, Dale Earnhardt. So that's the way they run now. And we are on lap 350, so we've got 50 more laps to go in the Holly Farms 400 here at North Wilkesboro. Will Dale Earnhardt hold on for the win? Most of the way in this race so far, he was the pole sitter, and of course we started according to points before Charlotte, and he took the lead at the beginning of the race and has held it most of the time. You know, they're talking about race car drivers hearing noises in their cars, as well as that car's run today. And as early as he went out of the race last week at Charlotte, you suppose that Earnhardt is concerned about what could go wrong with this car today? Is it going to happen? Am I able, going to be able to stay out here? You know those things have to be going through his mind. You would think so, especially after what happened last week in a mechanical.
mechanical problem that just eliminated him from the race completely at the end of only 13 laps. Ooh, look at him battle the wheel coming off the corner. Here's Rusty Wallace, number 27, and Bill Elliott in number nine. Now, I mentioned a few minutes ago that Larry Pierce was out of the race. He is, and he's back out on the racetrack. You can see him there as Rusty Wallace and Bill Elliott pass by. In fact, Bob, of the 30 cars that started this race, 27 of them are back out on the racetrack. We have shown graphics of some cars out of the race. The only three cars that are in the garage area right now are the two Petties, Kyle and Richard Petty, and uh, Dale Jerry. Rusty Wallace trying to hold his position. He just passed Bill Elliott to move up into seven, and each position he moves up gives him a few more Winston Cup points, and they are so very, very valuable. There is Earnhardt, off of corner number four. Finds himself in second place in the Winston Cup points for the first time since earlier this year at June. He lost it last week at Charlotte. So after the problems at Charlotte last week, has anything changed in the shop this past week? What broke at Charlotte was just camshaft broke. You know, that's material. Uh, you can't do anything about metal breaking. If it uh, gives up, it gives up. Uh, just one of those things. The guys in the shop are, are right on cue. They're uh, doing everything they got to do to try to win. And, you know, nothing's changed. Nothing has changed, certainly, as they have got him in the lead once again. Well, I tell you what, those fellows in the shop, I don't envy them for the next month trying to go over every part that they possibly can to make sure that there's nothing breaks. Earnhardt last week, 13 laps, he breaks a camshaft, finishes 42nd in a field of 42 cars. Last, oh, he made contact with Michael Walker going in the corner. Car wiggled tremendously in the middle of the corner. Earn our lucky that he didn't spin out. Well, if the uh, race ended right now, he would uh, be in the point lead by four points over Rusty Wallace if they finished in the position that they're in right at this point. Well, I'm sure that LG DeWitt, Frank Wilson, Herman Hickman, all the people down in North Carolina Motor Speedway is hoping that we come down there next week three or four points difference in the uh, Winston Cup game. Here is a good battle for position between Terry Labonte in number 11 and Jeff Bodine in number 5. This is for third place. Second is Ricky Rudd, but this is the battle for third now. Oh, we have a car in the wall. Jimmy Spencer slides up and bumps the wall between turns 3 and 4. The car is still moving. It's going backwards on the racetrack. NASCAR has still not thrown a caution flag. I don't believe he can get back down off the across the racetrack. If he does, he's going to run into somebody because Yellow the car's out. all the way around the track. Yellow's out. Earnhardt takes the yellow flag. Ernie Irvin just stayed on the lead lap. He was just about to be lapped, but now this caution was a uh, good deal for him. Well, I don't think Earnhardt be... wanted to see this caution flag. He, he wanted to go and rub this thing out the rest of the way. Now he's got to make another pit stop and hope the next set of tires that he gets on is as good as what he's had all day. He's definitely going to be feeding time with the zoo now when they all go in the pits. 33 laps to go. Tenth caution of the day. Earnhardt and the others waiting to come in for a pit stop. Dick Bergeron is going to call the pit stops by the leaders. Here they come, Dick. Yeah, Earnhardt's coming down pit road. Cecil Gordon was way off by the wall. Earnhardt's on the top. Ricky Rudd, who's been running second, is on the bottom. Both teams, as you can see, working the right side tires right now. They've got the left side lug nuts loosened up on both. Doesn't seem to be either one with a big advantage, but Earnhardt's guys, David Smith just came around with a jack. They're a little bit ahead. Earnhardt a little bit ahead on this pit stop. Smoke coming off the left front. That's where the brake would let a little smoke come off. Earnhardt's down and away. Boy, he did it again. Earnhardt's guys beat Rudd. Rudd's guys could not have tried any harder. One of them fell down, pushing that car down pit road. Wow. And the guy that gained the most on that pit stop, Dick Bergeron, was Rusty Wallace. Exactly He went right. in the pits running, what, about eighth position? Yep. Came out running third. Yep. Rusty Wallace is going to be lined up third for the restart. And then come, will come Jeff Bodine and Terry Labonte. So Rusty Wallace, because of that, finds himself now at the race for to end back in the Winston Cup points lead. We'll be right back. But look at the positions that he picked up in the pits. He went in seventh, came out third. But we've got to remind you that Rusty Wallace took on only two tires. And most everybody else got four. And you can see perhaps right now that being evident as 
Yes, here comes Jeff Bodine and Terry Labonte and Bill Elliott. Yeah, that two-tire change might have cost him like it did Mark Martin a moment ago, but rest his car had been pushing all day, and Mark Martin's had two, and so they chose to gamble that way to try to get the track position, but he just lost third position. Jeff and Bodine. And he's going down another position as Terry Labonte takes fifth away. Rusty is in fifth. Oh, and Bill Elliott gets sideways after contact from, from behind by Mark Martin. Yep. So really that advantage that he got in the pits is almost erased at this moment. Oh, it looks he lost the back end just a little bit more off that corner. Bill Elliott looks like he's going to have to go by on the outside. He's going to try it. And you can see the traction he gets. Three abreast. Oh, boy. Can this work? Somebody's got to back out. Oh, rusty. and it's going to be rusty. And here comes Harry Gant. Meanwhile, here's Mark Martin and Bill Elliott going at it side by side as we watch from Harry Gant's car. Yeah, I don't believe that was a good move on the Kodiak team to just put on those two tires. Same as Mark Martin a moment ago. That just didn't work for Mark. hasn't worked for Rusty. Morgan Shepard has went by Rusty Wallace. He's now in ninth position. Rusty Wallace is back to ninth. So that was a position behind where he was before the pit stop. And here is Bill Elliott and Mark Martin as they contest the fifth spot. Elliott has fifth at the moment, but there's Mark Martin on the low side. Harry Gant just sitting there waiting for a place to open up that he can put that full open. All four of these cars that are running side by side and nose to tail are battling for position. All are on the lead lap. Elliot, Martin, Gant, and Morgan Shepard. And there is Shepard's car. From Gant's bumper can. Back to the leaders. Meanwhile, it is Earnhardt who now beginning to get some green in his rear view mirror as here comes Ricky Rudd. Remember last year here at this race, Rudd with an outstanding performance. That was our pure lander replay and it looks almost identical to last year's race. Let's go down to the pit area and call in Dr. Jerry Punch who's with the crew chief on the 26 car, Larry McReynolds. They are cheering their driver in the pits here. The crew, the Blinker State crew now jumping around as Larry McReynolds watches the laps count off one by one, watching his driver and waiting, hoping maybe for a victory. Last year, the car is so strong here in the short track. Larry, you guys have been working and hustling all day. The car is getting better and better. Do you have enough to possibly challenge Earnhardt? I don't know. I believe Dale's going to have to slip a little bit. He hasn't slipped all day long, although right now we're a little bit quicker than Dale, but the problem's not going to be getting to him. It's going to be getting by him. 15 laps to go, you know. Dale's like chasing there with a BB gun right now, though. He knows he's got to stand on it. Well, Ricky Rudd's got his work cut out for him. Mark Reynolds and the crew, all they can do is stand here and watch. Well, I can tell you, I don't like a fat one. Tell us it like it is. And he <laughs> said it exactly the way that it is. But look at this great race going on. Elliot, Mark Martin, and Harry Gant. This is for fifth position. position. Ernie Urban is just about to take ninth position away from Rusty. And 
at the line. Irvin with about a half a car length advantage. This is the battle for ninth position and the final spot on the lead lap. And Ernie Irvin, as they come out of quarter number two down the back stretch, has a slight advantage. But Rusty is going to battle to the end to hold on. Well, I'll bet Barry Dodson and the Kodiak crew would like to make that pit stop over again. And Rusty Wallace has now fallen back to 10th position as the final car on the lead lap because he only took two tires in the most recent pit stops. For 11 laps from the end of the Holly Farms 400. Dale Earnhardt had slipped a little, and Ricky Rudd was just about to catch him. However, the yellow is out because of a spin in turn number two involving Bobby Hillen and Ken Schrader. And Rusty Wallace will dive in the pits and take on four tires, and that might be an advantage for him because none of the other cars is going to pit. Probably not. They, uh, they can't afford to take a chance. And Rusty didn't pit. Well, no, but the pit might not have been open, did he? At that, that time, he might need to, to go back around the next time before he can come into the pit. Okay, that's a good point, because there they are with a pit board. Harold Elliott, the engine builder, chief engine builder on the car with a pit board. While we were away for commercial, Dale Earnhardt got out of shape coming out of turn number four and slipped a little, and boy, Ricky Rudd pulled right up on his back bumper and had that caution not come out, we would have had a that real battle up front, and we still may have it. And look, Ricky Rudd's crew is out waiting well, for him, or is that a decoy? Decoy. Yeah, it, isn't, it isn't a decoy. Now, we'll see. They're all out there. You know, they want those other crew members to see him. No, they didn't come in. See it? And Rusty isn't either. Well, Rusty didn't come in, and that does surprise me, man, that he didn't come in, although they don't have it. He won't have to go, but he had absolutely nothing to lose but a set of tires because he was already running in 10th place. Exactly. And no other car on the lead left. So that, that's a little surprising that he would not have come in and, and took on uh, some tires. We're going to get the green lab flag on lap 397. We'll have three more racing laps to go. And it appears as if it's going to be a battle among Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bonai, Terry Labonte, Mark Martin, and who else? <laughs> yeah, who else? I tell you, now let's watch Earnhardt on this restart. He has some kind of a transmission in that thing because he really gets a jump when he takes off. Look at it. Here it is. Green flag is out. Three more laps to go. But Ricky Rudd was ready for it. Yeah, he was. He is right with him. Ricky Rudd in the quicker state viewing. We ride with him. Spin in turn one. Bobby Hillen against the wall again. We'll see if the yellow comes out. Yeah, I don't believe he's going to get off of that wall. But let's see. No, there we go. The wall, no yellow, two laps to go. White flag will come out next time around. Here comes Ricky Rudd moving to the inside of Dale Earnhardt. He's not going to be able to pass him at the moment. Let's see what happens on the final lap of the race. Here comes the field down for the white flag. One more to go. Rudd is inside of Dale Earnhardt as they go into turn number one, and both of them spin. And Jeff Bodine takes the lead. Ricky Rudd, here comes Jeff Bodine, who'll come down and win the Holly Farms 400. Bodine wins as both Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd spin on the last lap. And Rusty Wallace is going to finish ahead of Dale Earnhardt. Wow. Short track race. That's what well, Maybe, uh, maybe Rusty Wallace and them knew what they were doing by not uh, coming into the field. Wow. The final short track race of 1980s of the decade ends. And boy, it had a tremendous ending. As Ricky Rudd and Dale Earnhardt spun on the last lap, giving Jeff Bodine, who was running in third position, the win. And more importantly, Rusty Wallace, who was running in 10th position, finished ahead of Dale Earnhardt. He finished 7th. Earnhardt finished 10th. And so he maintains the lead. Let's go to Dick Bergman, who's with Children's. Well, Richard, you had quite a view of that thing. What do you see happen? Hey, it's just racing hard. I, it's just racing hard. I couldn't tell. Ricky got into Dale. You know, hell, I don't know. Y'all seen it, too. What were you telling your driver? You were just talking to Dale. What were you telling him, and what was he telling you? Uh, I just told all of them to be cool, you know. We just can't afford no trouble now. We do. We give it our best shot. That's the way it goes. 
And they're looking up pit road now. The crews are going up pit road. Everybody's headed up pit road right now. Both the children's crew is on its way up pit road, and also the Quaker State crew on the way up pit road. Right, and go. while all this is happening, Jeff Bodine has pulled into victory lane and wins the Holly Farms 400. We'll be right back. finish to the Holly Farms 400. The guys running first and second crash out on the last lap. Ricky Rudd and Dale Earnhardt giving Jeff Bodine his win and there he is in victory lane. Let's go to Dick Bergman who's with Ricky Rudd. Ricky, what happened up there? Well, I don't know. Dale and I got together. His handling went away after that last restart and I got on the inside of him. I felt like he came down on me. I don't know. All I know is we got together. You know, I hated that happen. We were going to have a good run for the, for the victory there. You guys had a conversation after this was all over. What was said? I think we're discussing the weather. I believe this. Uh, <laughs> tell him it was a pretty warm day out there today. Well, uh, Ricky Rudd with a good run, but it didn't end in victory lane for him here this afternoon. Everybody's caught, and the weather is very nice indeed. And here's a replay now of the action that occurred when the two came into the pits. That's Chocolate Myers, who is having a discussion with some of the members of the Ricky Rudd team. There's Larry McReynolds holding back one of the other members, and here comes an NASCAR official to say, okay, guys, cool it. The race is over, and there's no sense crying over spilled milk. Jeff Bodine, meanwhile, benefits from all of this and wins the Holly Farms 400. And our winner circle interview being brought to you by the Sears Die Hard Battery now with more power when you need it much. Here's Jerry Pine. To Jeff Bodine getting a big hug from wife Kathy. Jeff, congratulations on a great win. Jerry, it was. Uh, Exciting. That's what we think up racing's all about. I remember this race last year. I was sliding sideways in the third and fourth corner and got beat. I was kind of hoping they'd do that. Uh, Ricky was running good. He got under Dale and they just bumped down there. That's just hard racing, good racing. I guess they're, they're been discussing it out on pit row. I'd like to see that, but uh, you know, I, I hate to say that a place is old me, but this place really has. We've come real close a lot of times and last year and even this year finally got it it feels great it, it shows a come here rick it shows the character of this team and even though we're not going to be together right buddy we're Amen. still friends and we're sure. still raising hard and we're always going to be friends always oh yeah. great job great job. well your win today <laughs> rick hendrick the car here your win today clinches the seventh consecutive manufacturer's championship for chevrolet and uh, you did it the hard way from a lap down well, we did. I'm glad for Chevrolet. I won't be with them next year. I'm going to be with Ford, but uh, I'm glad we did this for Chevrolet and finally got a win this year. And it's been a long time, but uh, we're going to miss you, Rick. Miss you, Jeff. Love you, buddy. <laughs> Poignant here in victory lane as Jeff Bodine wins the Holly Farms 400. An exciting last, last, last three laps. And he broke a 41 race winless streak, his last at Pocono in 1988. And there are the unofficial point standings at the conclusion of this race. Rusty Wallace holds on to the Winston Cup points lead, but it's only by 37 now over Dale Earnhardt. And Mark Martin finds himself 128 behind the leader, Rusty Wallace. Next week at Rockingham, North Carolina, then at Phoenix, and then Atlanta. Our top 20 finishers here this afternoon. The winner, Jeff Bodine, Mark Martin second, Terry Lamonti, Harry Gand, and Morgan Shepard. Finishing six through 10, Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, Ernie Irvin, Ricky Rudd, and Dale Earnhardt. 11th was Kowicki, 12th Dick Trickle, 13th Ken Schrader, 14th Dave Marcus, 15th Tommy Ellis, and then finishing in the 16th through 20th positions, uh, we will check into, there they are, Bodine, Spencer, Hillen, and Waltrip. Dick Bergman is with Dale Earnhardt. Dale, what happened up there? Really seen on TV. Well, how do you how do you see it? You you obviously were involved. I gave him the whole bottom lane, you know. Uh, Dale Earnhardt obviously upset about this situation. Obviously not. <laughs> how will this affect your championship view from here on? You got three more to go. Think? They ought to find it. Some bitch that make him sit out the rest of the year. I And so on live television, we have candid comments from Dale Earnhardt involved in this incident with Ricky Rudd on the last lap 
of the Holly Farms 400. Earnhardt was leading the race, got taken out, he finished 10th. Rusty Wallace went on to maintain the Winston Cup points lead, and, well, Jeff Bodine, who was running third, came out as the winner of the race. Well, last year, as he said, he got in a similar situation, and uh, he got he finished third. This year, he finished first. And I'm telling you what, this, it was an unbelievable finish. But as someone said, Jeff Bodine said, that's what Winston Cup racing is all about. We are always continually having finishes like that. Uh, how we do it, I don't know. And we've got three more races to go, and I think you can pretty much bet that it's going to be that kind of finish to the 1989 Winston Cup season.